How's it going, everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar, and this is Near Mint Condition. I am joined by this gentleman right here to my right. This is the Norwegian assassin, as he likes to call himself. Mm -hmm. Who are you, sir? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Lars Pearson, and I keep telling you, Omar, gentleman is just is just rounding things up outrageously in my I've always been. Now. I, I, I always prefer the term maverick journalist. Um, but yes, uh, my name is Lars Pearson, and I, in another life, worked for Wizard Magazine um, as the price guide uh, manager. And also, I happen to be a Doctor Who expert, as some of you know, and it's always a good chance to plug that if you haven't bought a multi-volume million word Doctor Who guidebook for the Doctor Who fan in your life, please consider A History, um, which I co-write with Lance Parkin and is completely out of control. Awesome. Uh, and then we're going to be joining uh, – Curtis is going to be joining us in a little bit as soon as he gets back from uh, doing his daily routine. So His daily routine. <laughs> as he likes to call it. I don't know. Uh, he might not want everybody to know what he's doing. So I hope everybody's doing well, staying healthy. Uh, we are going to be looking at the Marvel May solicitations. Mm -hmm. uh, so these books are solicited for the month of May, but some may come out, <laughs> may, uh, may come out in later months like September or maybe sometimes in October. But just because they're solicited in the month for May doesn't mean that they will be out that month. Most of the time, the solicits that they schedule for the month of May are for comic books. Those books will be out. Trade paperbacks are about a month or two afterwards. Omnis <clears> are definitely about four to five months out. That's how long people have to order. So uh, there is a reprint of an omnibus in here that I haven't announced yet. So you guys get to find out with us together. And Curtis, thank oh, you. Hey, Welcome. I'm here. Um, and Curtis, where, um, who are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself if, in case this, somebody new is watching. And how did I get here? Why am I just popping up now? Uh, yes, um, I'm Curtis from the Epic Marvel Podcast. Thank you, Omar, for having me on your show once again. Sorry I'm late. Oh. I was just dropping my kids off at school. Thank you for being here, man. My pleasure, as always. Hi, Lars. Hello. We were told you were doing some sort of daily routine, and I was wondering <laughs> if a daily routine for Canadians is different and possibly superior um, to what you know Omar and I experience. Well, do you take your kids to school? I, 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 I don't, although I, uh, I once picked them up, a friend of mine, I went to see a college classmate and I, we picked up his kids. He says, and, and he, and he, he's little like five-year-old or something like that. And he said, uh, do you remember what, I, were you good today? He's like, yes. And he says, do you remember what I told you would happen if you weren't good today? He goes, yes. I go, what did you tell him what happened? He says, I told him I'd sell him to a factory. <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> Uh, seeing a lot of familiar names in the chat. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, so before getting started, uh, thank you to David Gabriel and Marvel for sending us this advance uh, solicitations. These will be out in a couple of weeks for everybody else. We just get special first dibs on the collected editions. Uh, so that's really cool that we get that. And we get to uh, see it all together, check out the prices, check out the covers, the content. Some of you all are like, wait, what about if they add this? And then sometimes I take that over to Marvel and they're like, no. Or they're like, <laughs> maybe. And then sometimes sometimes they're like, hmm, that actually makes sense. So it's really cool that we uh, – this is a big community. Um, the other important thing is while I am doing this, I do have to uh, mention that my dad is in the hospital. So oh I may have to jump off of this really quick to take a phone call. Uh, okay. But these gentlemen are here, and they will keep you entertained until I can come back uh, with their just astound, amazing knowledge <laughs> about everything. We will attempt to be a very poor substitute uh, in, in your absence. In yeah. the world of Marvel. But that's uh, yeah. in case I get a phone call that I have to take. I'm not, yeah. I yeah. just want to tell everybody I'm not being rude. I just have to jump off really yeah. quick. I, and I, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, my friend. Uh, but again, yeah. yes, thank you to Marvel for supplying this. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's been a lot going on in my personal life. Uh, but these kind of things, you know, they really uh, lift my spirits up. So I hope it does the same for a lot of people. Um, and we're, we're going to get started shortly. Uh, if you're just now joining again, uh, you probably noticed that the Predator Omnibus is on there. So, yes, the Predator is officially coming back, which is really cool. It's a book I got to announce well over a year ago. Uh, but it is officially now back into catalog or back in the solicits. It never really went away. It just kept getting postponed, postponed, postponed. And, you know, uh, different people will tell you different things. 
I just knew it wasn't canceled. I knew it was going to come out one day. That's all mm -hmm. I knew. Uh, and then there's another book in here that I haven't officially announced, a reprint of an omnibus. So oh. I hope it helps people that haven't um, picked it up yet. And as far as announcements, those those are still coming. I just got uh, some covers from Marvel. So I, I get to announce a couple more books coming your way. Hopefully the Spider-Man one will be an announcement that I get to make sometime this week. So uh, thank you all for being patient for that. I know I've, I think I've been promising those for a while. Well, <laughs> I'm not even going to read Woke Data's come. <laughs> well, Omar, you're just a tease, aren't you? You're just a tease. Yes, I've been taught well. Yeah. <laughs> taught well. Good. <laughs> gotta, you got to keep them hanging, man. You got to have a cliffhanger. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, mm -hmm. For the people that are asking, Omar, where are the Epic Collection solicitations, or I'm sorry, the announcements? Those will come probably sometime this month. Uh, I will get Curtis to join me for that. That's a lot of fun. Sometimes I like to get just the titles, whatever. I'll take whatever they give me. But I honestly enjoy the times that they give me just the volume number or they give us the title. Yeah. Curtis and I put together everything. <laughs> like We're like, okay, this is what we kind of expect to be in this. Totally fun. Yeah. Maybe. And then sometimes we were right. We were really, we were really good in that uh, Daredevil uh, out west, uh, epic collection. You, That's right. You, you say that with such confidence. Sometimes we're correct. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> so they yeah. are, those will come in a separate video. We'll probably do a live video for that because that's a lot of fun. Then yep. Curtis can have his after party and you all can do all the <laughs> that's right. um, Just like Caligula's it's a, Rome all over. It's a again. big event. It's a big event. Yeah. yeah. So, I tell you, I'm having people ask on a daily basis now because we're we've been saying, well, February is usually the time. And so as usually. soon as February first hit, mm -hmm. uh, like it was when are the announcements coming? Do you have a date for that yet? And then today, even this morning, like will there be a will you let us know what the date is in the video this morning? Yeah, I will uh I'll be asking for those. I know those usually um come after the omnis and the OHCs is the way that I've been getting the yeah. list for the last couple of years. Um, so I'll be asking. I don't have anything with DC at all. Like DC has been quiet about their catalog. So yeah. uh, we will see. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's have some fun. Let's... Let me make sure. Comics. Comics. Starting off with a big one that I. This was a lot of fun to uh, partake in this particular celebration right here. All right, oh, my yeah. God. I didn't see this one coming, and like I, I knew about it a, about. A month before everybody else found mm -hmm. out, but there was a specific reason why I had to announce it on that day because, well, no, in case you don't read monthly comics, never mind. <laughs> 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 but it was a big celebration for this character. So, yes, uh, we have three different covers for the Miracle Man Omnibus. And so you have the Kevin Nolan comic, the Gary Leach uh, cover, and then you have the beautiful Alan Davis cover which we unveiled a couple of weeks ago on our social media. Uh, all of them retail for $100, 760 pages collecting, uh, let's see here, Miracle Man 1, 3, 6, and 16. If you're miss if you're wondering why the other issues are missing, those are just reprints. Yeah, Everything is in here. Marvel Man Special Number 1, material from A11, Warrior 1 through 18, 20, and 21, and Miracle Man, uh, the 2014 series, 1 through 16. Plus all new Miracle Man annual number one, so it's a it's a big one. Yeah, and if any of you haven't read this and are curious what all the hoopla is about, you know, Alan Moore basically built his and he's brilliant in many regards. Built his entire career on like taking what was otherwise family friendly properties, not even children's properties, but family friendly, and upgrading them to being R. Um, and you know, like Swamp Thing was about the dilemma between Swamp Thing and his girlfriend more than anything else. And this is particularly art, but it's so well done. Oh, he, does it, he does it so well. I, um, I will say it is way ahead of its time. Yes. It is definitely mature content because of some of the things that happened in this book. And I'm not going to go yeah. into detail about it until I do an overview, but it is not for the faint of heart. There were just things happening in here that were not being done anywhere else. If not for this, we wouldn't have Swamp Thing. And then eventually Sandman, yeah. this is the book that kind of started doing and testing the waters with a lot of different things that you could do with the graphic novel format. Yeah. Uh, 
but very excited for this. And then the people that are asking, wait, what about the Neil Gaiman stuff? Well, Neil Gaiman isn't finished with his story arc. So I'm hoping what will happen, well, that will be yeah. another collection once uh, him and I think uh, Mark yeah. Buckingham get finished doing that particular story. So there, there you know. seems to be some swirling electricity that like maybe the Gaiman and Buckingham stuff, you know, actually will be coming out, which is shocking because we've been waiting so long for it. Again, I don't think it's spoilers to say that Alan Moore ties his story off very sharply to my mind. Oh yeah. So, and, yeah. Gaiman, and Gaiman's Gaiman, he's very talented and Buckingham's very talented. I'm not saying there's, it's not worthy of continuing, but I'm saying you can read this without benefit of the Gaiman stuff and be like, oh, I've got it. That's another thing I don't know. I'm so sorry. I, I will ask, though, people have been asking, is it going to be recolors? Is it the original colors? Is anything going to be censored? I really don't know. All I know is this is the book, mature content, 700 and what was it, 760 pages for $100. So if I find out things, I will be more than happy to share, as always. 40 years of Miracle Man. Crazy. Wow. Alan Davis. Man. All right. Moving on to Jim Lee. Sorry, I mean Conan. The Barbarian, the original Marvel years. Omnibus Volume 9. I got to announce 9 and 10 back to back. Makes me happy that they put this much effort into a series that, you know, we didn't think was. Whenever they say things like, well, you know, we'll keep making them if people keep buying them. That always makes me a little bit worried when, when a company yeah. says that, right? Yes. Because we keep making them as long as keep uh, people keep buying them means, oh, man, am I the only one that's buying this? Because that's <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I take it because there's so many things that I've enjoyed over the years, New Warriors, that uh, you know, things just get canceled because oh. I don't think anybody else is watching or reading. So it makes me really happy that this is wrapping up. And I, I, I've i made this clear on the channel whenever I got to announce he said, I don't really care if you like Conan or not. The thing that you have to pay attention to is this right here. The fact that we have a volume nine yeah. of a Marvel omnibus is insane. Yep. Two years ago on my – two and a half years ago on my channel, I was like, we're never going to see these things. We're never going to see a Conan the Barbarian. Two, two and a half years ago, this would have been called, if anything – Conan the Barbarian by Semeckis, maybe, or Jerry Conway by Conway. Yeah. yeah. Omnibus, right. yeah. you never had anything like this. So this is really setting the bar for, like, what to expect from, like, Amazing Spider-Man, <laughs> Avengers, X-Men, Fantastic Four, when they get there. Of course, I don't know what the plan is for that. Maybe after the Marvel Masterworks. But here's hoping that we see yeah. one, two, three, four, all in chronological order on the shelf. Uh, containing Conan the Barbarian 214 to 240. What if number 16? 704 pages, $125. And both, uh, I believe that's the uh, Michael Higgins cover right there. And then, of course, the Jim Lee cover. You have to go, you can Jim Lee. You have to use him as a cover. <laughs> when, when you said Jim Lee cover, I wonder if he was cosplaying as Conan there. But, oh, you know, you mean he drew the cover. No, no, no. All right. And yeah. Savage Sword of Conan, the original Marvel Years, Volume 8. Uh, now, this one's a little bit bigger. And... <sighs> Wow. This one contains issues 102 to 116, Marvel Comics Super mm. Special 35. It is also a little more expensive. It's $150 compared to 125, but it's got 1,056 pages. Um, man, mm. this, I think, what did it go to, Curtis or Lars? Do you all remember? Did it go to 235 or something like that? What up, <laughs> Tommy Vogue? Long time no see, buddy. Hope you've been doing well. It was um, definitely over 200. I don't remember yeah. the exact number, though. Uh -huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was... I it's Mad, Mad Dog coming back. Him. Mad Dog is invited anytime he wants to come on. He is I, – I still consider him a friend, and my door is always open because I am way too old to close doors. <laughs> Unless you're my ex-wife. That door's been closed for years. <laughs> this is a shocking disclosure, Omar. I didn't know you had an ex-wife. I just closed my door to her. She's the only person. That's not bad. 43 years on, on this planet. I've closed the door to one person. Come on. But, but close it gently. <laughs> Don't slam it. I mean that would be rude. No, I'm, just, I'm a gentleman. Just, just I'm a gentleman. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ultimate Spider-Man, uh, Omnibus Volume 2. Uh, of course, this was the biggie that I got to announce. This made a lot of people happy. I'm so happy for all of you that have been wanting this yeah. in Omnibus yeah. format. Mitt could not find those freaking um, – yeah, please don't tag my ex-wife, by the way. If you're watching, <laughs> doesn't know who she is. Um, could not find. I don't know why I'm looking over here. My shelves are empty right now. Uh, could not find the OHCs. They were impossible to find. So here it is: Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus Volume Two. I gotta get that Carnage cover. I love it. I love that they went with Carnage. Uh, mm -hmm. All yeah, Bagley, John Cassidy, right here. Although it's labeled Casada, uh, I'll write them a little note. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So here we go. 
uh, containing Ultimate Spider-Man 40 through 71, Ultimate 6, 1 through 7, and 984 pages, $125. Let me know which cover is the one you're going to get. This is the Ultimate 6 cover right here by Cassidy. Oh, but he didn't sure that Carnage one. That was <clears throat> Trevor Hair sign. What's that? For sure, the tre the Carnage one. That one's oh, just great. Right. Freaking awesome cover. I mean, this is nice, too. I like that. But man, that Carnage. I always loved Bag Bagley had a good mix of, like, McFarlane and Larson Venom. And I thought he brought that over uh, to uh, his Carnage creation. It's great, man. Uh, does this complete the series? Absolutely not. We still need... Two more on two more, yeah. Yeah, holy cow. Before we get to a long time. How do yeah. I how do <laughs> before we get to the spoiler title of the omnibus? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I can't maybe they'll rebrand that one as the, a the Miles time. Morales era. Well, before the Miles Morales era, though, we got that one omnibus that was called the yeah. blank of, of Love blank, blank blankety blank. blank do you think those issues will be folded into the ultimate oh. Spider-Man omnibus line? I think it would be a volume five. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, different times, man. Conan. Yep. Conan made it happen. <laughs> All the Conan haters out there. Uh, Look at this. Right. <laughs> Spectacular Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1. I know Curtis is dying on the inside because he wants a epic collection. It'll happen. It will happen. You know it will happen. Yeah. This, this makes me so happy. This is taking yeah. the first three Marvel Masterworks. Oh, man. And putting them together in one nice package. Spectacular Spider-Man 1 through 42, annual number one. Amazing Spider-Man, annual number 13. Fantastic Four 218. 928 pages, $125. You have the <clears throat> phenomenal Dave Cockrum here with this variant cover. I've always been a fan of Tarantula because he's, you know, Latino and he's evil. Mm -hmm. Actually, he <laughs> just kind of sucks as a villain. But I always <laughs> like it. Do, do, you, do you identify if they're evil? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Hey, uh, yes, I do. It's like, oh, they're the audience identification character. But I love Look. the fact that this one here, you know, starring Marvel's TV sensation. Now it could be yes. taken as Moon Knight, right? I love yeah, that's right. That. Yeah, nice touch. That is a that's nice great. touch. <laughs> and look at this list of creators on this book. It's just like, yeah. Big name after big name there. Oh, you got Frank Miller in here, man. And and yes. Vince like lines up yeah. right with that Roger Stern omnibus. Now, people have been asking, do you think they'll do a volume two? Well, yes. Call this one it volume will, one. It will, it will double dip heavily with that Roger Stern omnibus because that Roger Stern collects what 43 to 62 or something like that. You're gonna have yeah. about 19 issues of overlapping unless they leave them out. And then you have to go and get it. So I don't know. I don't think they would do that. I think they really would make this a spectacular Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 2 and put all those issues back in here. Me. Is the Stern it's one still in print? The Stern one? Yeah, it came back in a print. It had a second. Oh. It came back in a print twice. It came back in a print in okay. last year, and then it had a later printing. So, yeah. Okay. So very well, then happy. I think they would very for happy. sure put those issues in because that will sell the book. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you know, people no. like I know, I know X Men dudes like me. If they if they released an X Factor Omnibus Volume One, the classic years, I will buy it for eleven issues, and everything else will be double dipping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and there are several of us that are like that. Just saying. But I, this is the thing with Omnibus: one expects everything. I, is there any precedent for like them putting out an Omnibus Volume One, and then like everything after that was just chop suey? deliberate by design i don't i don't think I, so. that that was the way they would map the old x-men omnis because then we had events right like we had extinction agenda well, yeah but so there's still more than one volume before right that. well I, th yeah, I think i think we're all ex expecting like will they though go ahead and put out volume five of uncanny so will they <laughs> absolutely when i say in the 60 year anniversary 2023 okay. this is my guess if i were a betting man mm -hmm. that would be a good time to put it out but I don't, you can't put out a volume two and leave the stern stuff out. You just can't. So I, I think, well, I always, yeah, I, I say that. And I realize it's a lot of double dipping, right? We're talking about 19 mm -hmm. issues, but mm -hmm. as yeah. a publisher, what do you do? Do you release it with those missing issues? Because I mean, more than likely, I will say, I'm going to throw a number out there. Statistically speaking, 90% of the people that bought 
Spectacular Spider-Man one probably have Amazing Spider-Man Omnis in their sh on their shelf. Then yeah. again, eighty nine percent of the statistics are made up on the spot. So <laughs> right. uh, I don't know if, if if I was a publisher, I wouldn't want to put out a volume two that has that big of a hole in it. It would be a big question, right? Like, how would you do that? But I think I don't know. Uh, Captain Marvel by Kelly Sue DeConnick, uh putting everything in there from uh, that era of Kelly Sue DeConnick. I did. I think I did. Um, I emailed Marvel about that one page from Marvel 1000 that my buddy Aaron told me about and a couple of other people emailed me about. Mm -hmm. But this collects Captain Marvel, the 2012 series, 1 through 17, Captain Marvel 2014 series, 1 through 15, Avengers, the Enemy Within, Avengers Assemble 16 through 19, Avenging Spider-Man at 9 through 10, which is where she made her first debut as Captain Marvel, and Captain Marvel and the Carol Court 1 through 4. So you have the uh, Jamie McKelvey cover here and the David Lopez cover. I like the background on that one. I like the way that one looks. Yeah, it's good. And that one comes out in October. And speaking of October, or no, this is September, Spider-Verse, Spider-Geddon, Omnibus. 1,440 pages. Marvel's not playing. Wow. That's a That's big amazing. book, $125. Edge of the Spider-Verse 1 through 5, Spider-Verse 1 and 2, Superior – what is this? Superior – Superior verse team up one. Oh my gosh, I can't read this. Edge of Spider Verse one through five. Okay, so let's talk about that because that was not included in the original Spider Verse oversized hardcover. Mm -hmm. I don't know the mapping mm -hmm. on this yet because I know the people that have that OHC, much like myself. <laughs> how how do I put this? Hated Excuse the map in that <laughs> hardcover because. They gave you the table of contents of how to read it, but the way the book was mapped was just like the chunks all together, and it didn't make any sense. Plus, they left out Edge of the Spider-Verse, where Spider-Gwen makes her first appearance. Kind of crazy. Well, I, 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 I'm slightly less concerned about that than, as you say, the bizarre way they put in the table of contents that didn't match the book itself. Let's be very generous. Yeah, it's, it's one of the most bizarre publishing decisions of the last 10 years. Let's be very generous to assume Marvel knows about this problem. And I bet you, when the mapping on this is known, it'll be fixed. They'll put the two books together just to I, make. I, it. I, I, find, I, I find the odds of them committing that sin the second time around to that would be a. I will, I, you know, I will strongly suggest it. Yeah, <laughs> but you will strongly suggest that they should do I, it just to piss people off. No, um, no. I, I bet you they know about it. They have to know. I think they probably do. But Drop I mean, the, email the, case, but the only thing that this is missing, I believe, is the. Sp Spider Verse miniseries, the third Spider Verse. Mm -hmm. It was a five issue miniseries, I think. And, and yeah. please correct me if I'm wrong. If you're looking at the mapping of this right now, um, no, I don't see it. it there was a twenty. I want to say it was 2018, 2019. It was a five issue little miniseries. Uh, it was a Spider Zero. Aha! Was this it? Was this it? The Spider Zero? Yeah. Maybe this is what's missing, I want to say, to wrap that up. But by all means, please, if you're watching this later or right now, let me know in the comments. All right. The one I got to announce this week was Star Wars Legends, The Rebellion. So more Legends. I'm not done with the Legends era, which is cool. Omnibus Volume 1, Collecting Star Wars Empire 7 through 14. About that book of Boba Fett. Man, Brian, uh, what's her name? Bryce Dallas Howard. Oh, my gosh. That woman can direct. Yeah. Woo. She... She's also not too bad on the eyes. Um, <laughs> I, I I am also wearing a celebratory Boba Fett as bubble tea pin. I haven't um, seen that. I yes, seen yes, because Boba Fett. Boba Boba. Yeah, Boba, Boba. <laughs> so Empire 714, 16 through 27, Star Wars mm -hmm. Vader's Quest, four issue miniseries, Star Wars the 2013 series, 1 through 20, Star Wars Kids, 1 through 11, 12, A Story, 13 through 20, and Star Wars 3D, 1 through two and three wonder if you get 3d glasses uh you don't it's um in the epic collection they've printed it straight straight black curtis the epic collection is for poor folks <laughs> <laughs> oh, shots fired oh, whoa <laughs> well there is the quote that's going to be trending please don't quote um, me on that i love i obviously love the epic collection you're kicked out of my group omar oh my gosh can you imagine the poor folks like 50 dollars books who says that? This guy that hasn't had enough sleep and just loves oh. to stir stuff up. Um, Actually, but, uh, is the if the omnibus covers three epic collections, two, two, 
two or two of them. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Then it is for us poor people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for us. Tri- and here is the omnibus reprint. I haven't announced, but officially you get to hear about it here first. Yeah. Cheek Hulk by Dan Slot omnibus. <clears throat> yeah, uh, nice. to, with a new direct market cover. So it's a that is a Mike Mayhew cover right there. I so greatly funny. enjoyed this run. I I'm. I don't normally tune in for what she Hulk is doing. What's this for your poll for folks? Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, I, now I started something. I'm so sorry. Ooh. I was kidding. I I don't normally read she Hulk all that regularly, but but Dan Slot's run was very clever. It really yeah, did. it was really good. I liked it so, too. Uh, collecting she Hulk one through twelve. Then it w- when it was relaunched one through twenty one. Marvel Westerns Two Gun Kid, eight hundred and twenty four pages, a hundred dollars. And if you're gonna get the she Hulk by mm-hmm. Peter David, this is the run that precedes it. Yes. And this time around, it's going to have a direct market cover with my boy Howard and Daredevil back there. Good cover. Fantastic Four, more of the burn era. Boy. Fantastic Four. So collecting issues 258 to 268. Alpha Flight number four. There is no Marvel Masterworks of Alpha Flight, is there? There's no well, epics. Well, Burn Alpha Flight, I'm not sure it's in print at all right now. And the omnibus is out of print and the classic it's, print. it's it's begging for either a Marvel Masterworks or an Epic collection. And you know, either one. But mm. uh, the, 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 the problem with the Masterworks would be a lot of Alpha Flight to follow Thank Burn is super pretty dreadful <laughs> in my yeah. view. So um that could be a challenge. <laughs> I'm poor and I love me the epic collection. It all makes sense now. <laughs> You're poor because you don't make fifty dollars on a book, man. See, it's a vicious cycle. Yeah, the Burn Alpha Flight Omni super expensive. Yeah, it is. It's out of print. All right, all right. This is my goal. It's like two hundred bucks or something like that. My goal when the uh, Marvel Omnibus reprint list comes out is you all have to make Alpha Flight be reprinted, and we get a volume two. We get the Bill Mantlo stuff. Then you get some Mike Mignola in there. You get some Jim Lee artwork in there. You get Box. Who doesn't love Box? I do love Box. So, Marvel Masterworks, Alpha Flight, number four, Thing, number 10, Material from Fantastic Four, Special Edition, number one, Thing, seven, and Marvel Fanfare, number 15. So, I'm hoping, I don't think it's going to happen, though, that when that volume one reprint of Fantastic Four by John Byrne comes out, the Omnibus, they use the mass, the uh, the scans from this, from the mm-hmm. uh, Marvel Masterworks. That would be great. I would love that. And finally, did you, did you feel the scans were not up to it? I love the scans, but I, that uh, Fantastic Four Volume Two, the new masters that they used on it. Oh my right. gosh! To a nerd like me that likes and and people like Curtis. Okay. Like, it was a very very noticeable difference. It, to yeah. us, yes. To a lot of people, no. It's like, um, how do I? I always compare it to the people that like watch movies. You have a home theater at home. Uh, and if you can't tell the difference between 1080p and 4K, then it's not, you know, then you're not going to really notice things like this. You're okay with 1080p. Mm-hmm. So I, I love how you I said nerd like me and Curtis, you know, <laughs> and, because you're excluding me from that. And, and, and that could be, you know, like derogatory, you have no taste, or it could be a compliment, you're not a crazy person. I'll try to figure out which one that was. Maybe it's both. Maybe it's it could both. be both. It could be both. <laughs> so Brenner, the original Mar- the almost said Marvel years. The original years, finally. I've always okay. been a fan of this Chris Warner cover. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait to put this in my library. I can't wait. Now, finally, uh, this is coming out. Give me one second, gentlemen. You all talk about this. Uh, I'll be right back. Sure thing. <laughs> I, 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 by sheer coincidence, he has – stepped out while we're talking about a topic that I do not know much about. Oh, I know. Well, do you know at all any of the reason why it was delayed? And like they canceled the 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 new series that was coming out as well, right? So I figured it was like some sort of legal issues that were preventing the characters to being used. Maybe someone in the chat can fill us in there um because uh that's what I understand, but I don't know if it was ever actually explicitly stated. I have I have not been following the um y- 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 you know behind the scenes details of Predator because I don't actually know that much about Predator. I am aware the Predator is a thing that exists. Um, yeah. I am you know. Oh, <laughs> I love wow, that. Omar, you came back on my breathtaking commentary. Yeah, I was just <laughs> bragging about how you two are the smartest guys I know, and you're like, I guess Predator is a thing. <laughs> 
Mars, <laughs> you're on the internet. This is YouTube. People believe whatever you say. You can't say things like, I guess Predator was a movie. I guess and they made comics about it. <laughs> Predator was one of those films that I um uh it would be on syndication, you know, like network. I would always catch snippets of it. So I love the alien movies. Absolutely love yes, them. But I yes. no, no, that I, that I can actually speak the, about. Yes. I didn't care for the predator ones at all. So I never <laughs> um never got on in You that, didn't like the predator things. movie. I quote the pe predator movies all the freaking time. <laughs> no. I kid I finally showed my uh 12 uh 12 year old kid the first one. She loved it. Cool. And I was That's like, good. it's so testosterone driven 80s movie. It's so great with so many awesome quotes. Wait, Predator wasn't a movie? Yes, it was. These guys are crazy. Apparently, they didn't get it in Canada or Norwegian. Or, or in no. Iowa. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I know I, I've seen all the Alien movies, some of them multiple mm -hmm. times, but I but Aliens Predator, I don't know, it was renowned as being so terrible that I haven't actually watched those. They might not be terrible, but I haven't seen them. No, they're pretty uh, bad. Oh, they're pretty bad. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. See, it's things like this doesn't encourage me to watch them. <laughs> Wait, the Predator movies are awesome. The, the second one with Danny Glover. No, Aliens versus Predator. Oh, they're horrible. Ah! The comics are freaking awesome, though. Okay. That's what I can't wait for, is a <laughs> AVP omnibus. I love this stuff. I love the Predator. Uh, I still have the hardcovers from Dark Horse. So this collects uh, Predator 1 through 4, in case you forgot, because it's been over a year since I announced these. Uh, Predator 2, 1 and 2. Uh, the Big Game 1 through 4, Cold War 1 through 4, Bloody Sands of Time, the two issue miniseries, Bad Blood 4 issue miniseries, Invaders from the Fourth Dimension, uh, Dark River, Strange Route, Ru <coughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Predator Kindred 1 through 4, Material from Dark Horse Presents, all those, and Dark Horse Comics. So, man, John Arcudi in here, I think, mm. is one of the creators. Yeah, let's see. <clears throat> Jerry Prozer, Evan Dorkin, Chuck Dixon, Charles Moore. All these names that a lot of people are probably familiar Evan with. Evan Dorkin did Predator comics. That's awesome. We was doing a lot of uh, Dark Horse stuff back then. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, that's right. Got to pay the yeah, man. Hi, Omar. How's the Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man title different from Amazing Spider-Man? Um, it's Well, different it, adjectives for a start. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how do I put it? it it used to be when that title launched there mm. wasn't a whole lot of difference they were very very similar just with different writers yeah they wouldn't use a lot of a-list villains for spectacular spider-man though they would use a lot of b and c list villains and a like lot uh, how do i put this if you were a writer at marvel comics and you love spider-man your goal mm. was to get amazing spider-man yeah the step to get to Amazing Spider-Man was always working on Spectacular Spider-Man. Spectacular Spider-Man. Think of like Uncanny X-Men and Adjectiveless X-Men. Think of like titles like that. It's still the same universe. It's still the same ongoing story. It's just done by a different creative team. Sometimes the Spectacular Spider-Man stories were better than the Amazing Spider-Man stories, though. Yeah. There, a lot of talent went into those books. There was a definite sense that, well, Spider-Man sells very well. We should have another title to fill out the ranks. Now, it's not oh. to say that good work wasn't being done on it. I mean, you know, a lot of those creators were really, really good. Why, um, is, why is everybody screaming Tom Taylor? Are you, did I pass something up? Oh, Tom Taylor. I keep going ah. back to this. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it's the Dark Ages book. Sorry. Ah. Dark Ages trade paperback. All right. There, my, my boy Joe knew it. Everybody else was freaking out. <laughs> sorry, I didn't know y'all were... Uh, <laughs> I was leaving you hanging like that, but this collects Dark Ages one through six. I'll be honest with you. Um, I really thought this was a DC. Didn't he do a DC book called Dark Ages as well? Like it's the uh, alternate reality on the Justice League. You don't mean Dark Metal, do you? No, 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 no. No, no. it was. It was. Some, it wasn't. I don't think it was called Dark Ages. It was very similar to this or the title, maybe. I mean, Dark Ages is a term. It's thrown around a lot. I mean, I. Isn't there Astro City, the Dark Age, and things like that? Mm -hmm. Nice cover there, though. Yeah. yeah. Cuello's artwork is awesome. And we get King Conan. King Conan. This is uh, Jason Aaron, his new series. And Mahmoud Azrar is the artist on that. <coughs> Thank you all. Dark Knights of Steel. Dark Knights of Steel. Mm -hmm. Dark Knights of Steel. David Gabriel just yelled at me. He said, DC did not do Dark Ages. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, I get my names mixed up. 
Dark Knights of Steel is what it was called. Tom Taylor did that too, right? Thought so. Um, but this is the new series, collecting issues one through six of the trade paperback, 144 pages, $17.99. I cannot wait for this. I love uh, Mahmoud Asrar. I think he's a great artist for uh, Conan mm -hmm. and Jason Aaron. I think he, he was going to do 12 issues, if I'm not mistaken. And David C. is saying Dark Ages is terrific so far. Okay. Tom Taylor, I really have never been disappointed by anything he's written. I really enjoy his his stuff. Yeah, He made me care about Laura. I didn't care about X-23 until I read All New Wolverine. Shang-Chi by Jean mm -hmm. Luen Yang, Volume 3, Family of Origin. This has been a really fun series. I know, Curtis, you're going to wait 20 years to get the Epic Collection, but you really should be reading this. <laughs> this is really good, man. I do really like Jean Luen Yang. He's, great. he's a great writer. Yes, he is. And I like the whole family aspect of like the weapons and bringing all those characters back. So this collects issues 7 through 12 of that series, of the new 2021 series, and Marvel Voices Identity. Mm -hmm. Eternals! This is another series that I've really enjoyed. Yeah. I think I'll... I hate saying this, but like Eternals was always a hard comic for me to get into. And this was the easiest like gateway to get into the Eternals, I thought. And this is, of course, uh, Karen Gillen. It's at Ribic supplying the artwork. This is going to look nice in an oversized hardcover. But this is the second trade paperback, collecting issues 7 through 12. I've really enjoyed this run as well. And yeah, I'm not someone who's a big Eternals fan. But like, you know, the Neil Gaiman run was very good. Um, and this run's been really interesting. I found it curious how much it does depart from the movie and how there wasn't an more of an expectation, you know, on Marvel's part to follow it. Of course, the movie got delayed and all that, and that didn't help. <laughs> um, but I have to right. shout out, thank you to Curtis recently for doing um, uh, podcasts on the Jack Kirby Eternals run, mm -hmm. of which I've read a good amount, but not all of it. And since you did it for me, now I don't have to read them. <laughs> that's that's good. If you uh, if you missed the last half of the of that series, then that's fine. Because from it your wasn't podcast, it seemed to become an increasingly <laughs> bewildering experience. Oh, um, but Karen Gillen on this, no, I've I've really enjoyed this. And of course, you do have the odd angle Thanos being, you know, an eternal um, yeah. with the deviant gene. So this this is. And God help us in our current political age that Thanos would, you know, rise to the ranks and become in charge of them. Yes, it's very interesting to read. I, it's, no, it's those great. first, first issues were freaking awesome. Yeah. Princess Omar, why does that exist? How <laughs> <laughs> strange. Um, somebody was asking. Sorry about. Hold on, I guess. Let me go back to the point about the. <laughs> Uh, about the Omnis. Uh, if you missed it, we're going to go back. We'll go back. Just give us a few minutes. We got to go through yeah. the epics here. I do, I do wish. I do wish the Golden Eternals was coming out in hardcover, though. I would much rather buy it in hardcover. But well, I mean, they got to get the trades out first, right? So let's get those. Well, yeah, they don't always. I mean, sometimes they just go you know, straight to a hardcover collection. But you know, but it's well, fine. Sometimes it takes them a long time. Yeah, like, that's tr like, that uh, is Zdarsky's, uh, you know, the uh, Marvel Two and One, Zdarsky's yeah. uh, Invaders, which is a phenomenal series. Yeah. So. Let's look at this. Gillen, Gillis, Kirby. See, I Whoa. actually like the Knopfs better than Gaiman. I know that sounds blasphemous to a lot of people, but I actually like their run more than I did Gaiman's run. Yeah. Omar, any word on Amazing Spider-Man Volume 4 reprint? The Omnibus. Uh, thank you for the super chat, by the way. No, I haven't heard. I haven't heard. Any new information on the Strange Academy oversized hardcover and what issues this collect? Yeah, I know. People have been getting different answers. I I will. I'm sorry. I will. I will ask um, about the what the contents are supposed to be, and let you all know by Saturday if they answer <laughs> by Saturday. I can't make promises. That they're rolling up. Uh, she <laughs> Hulk. I'll tell you by Saturday or not, or I'll make something up. <laughs> she Hulk by Rainbow Rowell, Volume One, and you know my wife really likes her books, and her Runaways I was told got a lot better towards the end, so. Excited to see someone else's take on She-Hulk. This is volume one. And the cover is gorgeous by Jen Bartel. I love her covers. Yeah. She's a really good artist, too. Like, um, what did she do? Was it the Blackbird book for Image Comics? Roje Antonio, I believe, is the artist inside the book. thought it was uh, Mahmoud Azrar at first for a second. Omar, any new info? Now that people are asking me about new info. I don't. Uh, new info on Spider-Man versus Venom mm -hmm. Omni reprint. Uh, no, sir. No new info on that either. 
Okay, so Strange Academy is a director's cut of issues one through six in full color, sketches and extras after that. That's that's the word. Look, you didn't even have to wait till Saturday. Nice. There you go. It's there cute. you go. Thank you, David. Uh, she Hulk, and we have Ben Riley Spider Man. Mm -hmm. Big thing about this. Okay, so I know people, you know, Ben Riley. Uh, a lot of people in the '90s are like, "Oh gosh," but a lot of people really love the character. But the big thing for me is J.M. Demetrius. Yeah, writing yeah. a Spider-Man book again. Yeah. Oh my exactly. gosh! Yes, yes, all day, every day. Yes. Plus, you have uh, Steve Scrooge doing the oh. cover. Yeah. And it's David Baldeon mm -hmm. doing the artwork. This collects the first five issues. I hope it's the first five issues. And is this an ongoing series? I don't know. I don't know. Jay. I think it might be um, a series of mini series like they did with Symbiote Spider Man. Mr. Tolliver, thank you for the super chat. Did you travel back in time? Hey, guys, any word on a Mighty Thor Volume 2 or a She Hulk by Dan Slot reprint? Thanks. You're in oh. luck. Oh. The Somebody She Hulk Volume Keep getting... watching. <laughs> no, he. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, yes, She Hulk by Dan Slott is coming back, and it's in this solicitations. We'll go back to it here in a second. Oh, it is a mini series. Um, okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. So, so JM, he almost never writes anything that's not interesting. Yeah. Um, it it occasionally doesn't work, but it's always interesting. So he's always worth checking out. Oh my gosh, he's phenomenal. One day I want to see his name on an omnibus. You know, like the. If they can get him on an ongoing basis, that'd be fine. But, you know, I he doesn't seem to do a lot. Well, I mean, like a classic time. omnibus, like the Spectacular Spider-Man run. Those oh, are like, oh, yeah. Oh, sure. They could, they could collect his old stuff but in terms of the new one. Yeah. His old stuff, I feel so. That's um, a Steve Scross cover, did you say? For that? Steve Scross does a cover. It looks like uh, Dan Jurgens. It looks like Dan Jurgens. Yeah, yep. exactly. That doesn't look like Scross at all. Mm, but it maybe it's inked by Jurgens? I don't know. Let me see. Maybe they're the same person. Steve Scrooge. That's impossible. Have Steve we ever Scrooge. seen them together? Scrooge had a very <laughs> uh, Joe Quesada style when he first started out, which I loved. Um, it looks a little bit like Jurgens, doesn't it? That's true. His, Steve Scrooge's style has changed quite a bit. I yeah. I read um stand on we we stand on guard, and um, oh, it's so great. Of course, you yeah. had to read that. Of course, in they Canada, <laughs> you Canadians are so evil in that. <laughs> That's a great book by Brian K. Vaughn, by the way. Uh, Thor by Donny Cates, Volume 4, God of Hammers. So collecting more of – wait, <clears throat> what? Hold on. So this collects Thor 19 through 24, but why are they crediting Walter Simonson, Dan Jurgens, and J. Michael Straczynski? Is there a legacy issue in here? Oh no, it says legendary creators return to celebrate Thor's mighty legacy. That's awesome. Like yeah, those are like the biggest the biggest yeah. runs of Thor right there. Pencil by Nick Klein and written by Donny Cates. Yeah, that is awesome. Will Donny Cates Thor mm -hmm. run get a hardcover? I think the chances are really good. I mean, it's a uh -huh. it's a it's a good seller. The trade paperbacks have been good, and people have been <clears> asking, like, you know, if they're going to get an OHC. I don't know for sure, but maybe one day I think it will. Maybe I'll, maybe they'll wait till the whole run is over and we'll get an omnibus, or maybe they'll do OHCs. Alien Volume 2. This was a fun series by Philip Kennedy Johnson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a legacy number of 700 – issue 750. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, there wasn't an – I was – there wasn't an anniversary issue. Come to think of it. So Thor 24 is 80 pages. So no plans for a Thor hardcover of Donny Cates' run. That's from David, not me. Sorry. Let me refresh. Yeah. So David said no plan. So like I said, maybe when the whole run is over, we'll get an omnibus of it. Mm -hmm. So Alien Volume 2 Revival. I really enjoyed the first one. But I'm a sucker for these things, though. I'm a sucker for throwing a bunch of Marines going out there and getting slaughtered by a bunch of aliens. I'm in. But this is Volume 2, Collecting Issues 7 through 12. Salvador La Roca supplying the artwork and Philip Kennedy Johnson writing it. Did I miss any Ultimate Spider-Man? Yeah, it's in there, man. We'll go back to it. Just hit us with the Omni. Well, you got to wait till his run. We don't want to hit you with the Omni? Why, why do you hate yourself? I don't know how big it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will go back there in a second. At this moment, I just want to remind everybody to hit that like button, please really helps with our channel and our YouTube algorithm. Star Wars, Crimson Rain, Dang. Charles Soule, Steve Cummings, with the covers by Lionel Francis Yu, collecting Crimson Rain issues one through five. 
The Star Wars saga like no other. I really enjoyed his Darth Vader. That was a fun book. I read that. I read that in one freaking sitting one night. I loved it. So this is a new mini series, and then we have Doctor Afra, Volume Four. For anybody, no, never mind, never mind. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna spoil anything. Uh, Doctor Ma- Afra. I just say Marvel's dedication to Doctor Afra. I'm really impressed by that. Um, she was great, man. Gillen's. Oh, oh, I mean, that omnibus is phenomenal. She, she she is a wonderful character. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought. You know, in the in the Darth Vader run and whatnot, she was very good. I'm I'm impressed with how long they've kept publishing her, since she's not yet been fed into like one of the TV shows or a movie or something like that. So, um, no, uh, always an interesting character though. So that's great. Okay, uh, well said, well said. I, how about this? I am surprised that Disney hasn't jumped on a chance to do a live action TV series. Well, and of course, the, one of her sidekicks did show up in the book. No, 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 no. Oh, just in case right. people overseas <laughs> don't have Disney Plus. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, apologies. I gotta have a censor button for you. Just well, in case people, for not a few weeks, I mean, people yeah. overseas don't have Disney Plus, so they don't have access to the same things we do. So I always try to be careful. Like, okay. I still don't even spoil things that happened forty years ago, and people still get mad at me. I, uh, Darth Vader. Well, that is their fault, if I may <laughs> say. <laughs> Thanks. Right. You need to stop buying all the epics and get some omnis is what they need to start doing. Star Wars. By Darth the way, Vader Darth Vader is Luke's father. Let's just get that right out there, okay? You just spoil that for some kid that's watching. <laughs> Darth Vader by Greg Pak, also another fun series. That first issue of this new series, I actually like it made my jaw drop. I was like, what? What does that mean? I don't know if y'all keep up with the new series. Uh issues 18 through 22 of this particular era. Reign of X continuing <coughs> collecting this anthology. I love it. Uh, yeah. Planet Size X-Men 1, X-Court number 2, New Means 19, Wolverine 13, and Sword number 6, 160 pages, 1799. Marvel trade paperback. This came out in gallery edition last year, and now it's being available in trade paperback format, $19.99, 216 pages. This is this was great. I think Melanie did the overview of it. She beat me to it because she was like, oh, I want to read that. It's Alex Ross. And who am I to say no to my wife? I've tried. Thor, the saga of Gore, the God Butcher. This collects Thor, God of Thunder, 1 through 11. In case you're somebody that doesn't want to get the omnibus and you want to get some uh, a book for somebody that is interested in the comic book, you know, I almost said comic book adaptation of the movies. How dare I? <laughs> in case they <laughs> like the movie and they want to see what the original stories are about, this might be the way to go. Yeah, well, and thank you to Marvel for finally, uh, they're just about to publish the last hardcover in Jason, er, sorry, like Deluxe Edition. I'm glad they didn't ditch those. Because Yes, I, exactly. I mean, you know, they, they, they went they were to waiting a long time, but thank you, Marvel, for following through on that. That's really good. It always worries me when I see an omnibus announcement. I'm like, oh, no, they're going to ditch the OHCs. But they went all the way through, so I'm glad that they did that. Well, and I bought all the OHCs, and to like, not have that last one is always kind of annoying. Because Suicide Squad, for example, just the uh, Rebirth Deluxe has just stopped, which was kind of annoying. Omar, how are the chances of Captain America by ta Coates omnibus? All they have to do is put both the hardcovers together. And there you go, man. Mm-hmm. I think for me, though, I, before I see ta Coates, I want to see some classic stuff like Mark Grunewald's run collecting. Uh-huh. Like, mm-hmm. there are certain runs on characters that are so iconic to, like, to me that I'm – Peter David's Hulk, like, yeah. is yeah. one of those like I have to have on a shelf. Like yeah. that to me is my definitive Hulk. Mm-hmm. Grunewald's Captain America in that same way. I mean, the man wrote it so many years of his life spent writing Cap. It'd be great to have all those on the shelf. Or like Thor by Tom DeFalco. There's another guy I don't hear you know get enough a lo- lot of love. Like I'm glad people are buying Spider Girl though. That really makes me happy. Those yeah. books keep selling and. Hopefully we'll get something out of uh, that has uh, Tom DeFalco stuff on there. Uh, now let's get some epics. Ah, Curtis, yes. Curtis, take it from here. <laughs> take the wheel, Curtis. This is Excalibur Epic Collection Volume 1, new printing, because that other one has been under print for a long time, and actually a lot of people have been asking for this, so this is good to mm-hmm. see. Um, this is a collecting of the early, early years of Excalibur, <clears throat> plus a few issues that come before Excalibur with like first appearances of some of the Excalibur characters. Yeah, like a lot of characters from Captain Britain's title came on. It was yeah. a lot of fun, man. I think, Ooh. again, for anyone who hasn't read it, and I love it, um, 
Excalibur marches to a different drummer. It sure does. <laughs> than, than the other X titles. If you're expecting just kind of a balls the wall X Men knockoff, um, this is not it. It's not more, you know, I'd say it's more comedy driven, even though, like, and I won't spoil it, um, like, one of the issues <laughs> just ends with just a, a brutal murder. And I, I, I remember sitting there reading at the time and just it, my guts being torn that, out of my mind. That's what I liked about it is it yeah. like lures you into a state of security. Yes. That, there is a character that appears in the second omnibus. I remember reading that issue as a kid. I'm not going to give away what issue, but a main character who I thought was a main character dies in it just yeah. like that. And I was like, yeah, that, it, it, can't it, be, uh, that, that will be fixed by the end of this arc. Nope. <laughs> I, 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 know, I know the one you mean. And yeah, it's, it's, it's because it's so fast and you're like, Oh God, so-and-so has died. And then as you say, there's no, there's no coming back for them. We talked about the Omnis earlier. If you want to go back, or you can just wait. We're going to go back to them here in a minute. Just give me a second. Yeah. But no, uh, it, it, it doesn't does have Scott and Gene going, Scott. No, no, they don't. It, it does not. <laughs> um, they have their no, own drama. It, Excalibur's not forever. I, I, this is going to sound awful to say. Some people don't really like a lot of comedy. And they just don't. Um, yeah. they, they want everything to be, you know, drama-driven and, and, and tense and a bit grim and adult, and, which is fine if that's what you want. Um, yeah, no, I, I think Excalibur is something truly by Claremont Davis is something truly special. Definitely, uh, magic, right? They captured magic yeah. that even when Davis came back to Excalibur, it was great. Oh, but fantastic. It was still missing those uh long arcs that Claremont loved to do. Uh, yeah. Wolverine Epic Collection Tooth and Claw, man, they really love Venom. They chose that cover. This is from uh, Marvel <laughs> Comics <laughs> premiere, I think, or Marvel Comics Presents. Or no, 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 no Venom Claw. miniseries, Venom Tooth and Claw miniseries. Uh, who was the artist on that dude? Is Joe St. Pierre. Oh man, he always drew yeah, Venom I... with those huge teeth with no definition in the in the in the teeth there. Yeah, um, you're right. Okay, Larry, like I did it. like one of the covers of Tooth. I think it was issue number one. I thought that was a cool cover. Yeah, there's uh, one where he's like, Yeah, with his claw up Yeah, that him. one with his claw yeah, out yeah. and Venom. I like, like that one too. Side face. Okay, kind of, so kind of collecting hidden. Wolverine 101 to 109, 102.5? 102.5 was a Toy Fair giveaway issue. Thank you. That's why I was like, that sounds like a radio station. What is that? <laughs> Annual 96, Uncanny X-Men 332, Venom Tooth and Claw, three-issue miniseries, Logan, Path of the Warlord. I love that. That's got artwork by the late uh, John Paul Leon, and Logan Shadow Society. All of that collected, 496 pages. $44.99. Is this the epic before Eric Larson? Uh, this is way before Eric Larson. We still have Hammond needs to finish his run. This is what I like to call the ogre years. <laughs> the ogre Wolverine yeah, he has no turns nose. into an ogre. He has no nose. Adamantium. Anyway, you can read it yourself and judge it. Um, I, I want to quickly address a question in the chat. They were talking about the sure. fill-in issues on Excalibur. And I have to say, it is unfortunately true. Um, if it's not... Oh. Claremont or Alan Davis, those fill and stuff, it's pretty bad. It's pretty I, I, bad. I, so, I, I, okay, I will give you some of them are, but I beg to differ. There's some really good issues in those. Oh, uh, I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, just like every title, right? Like you're gonna fill in fill in writers so, and fill in uh artists come and go. But every once in a while, I there were some really good g hidden gems in those yes. issues. Like I mean, uh, I, I would agree with you. I'm just I'm just if you want to spare time in your life <laughs> and see just Claremont Davis, then I think that's okay. Can, can Lars apologize for the half issues in Wizards VF? <laughs> not the Astro City one. That was one of the best things ever. The Astro City one hey, was hey, really good. Ultimate X-Men one had Jeff Johns. That right, I, I, you, God, was, I don't remember that. I think it was Jeff one. Johns that wrote it. Okay, yeah, no, you're probably right. I almost want right. to put money on that, Lars. Okay. Yeah. All right. Lars was actually the reason. Wizard, wizard did it. What, all the, one half <laughs> <laughs> the half issues. That's yeah, astonishing because they started before I was there. All right, um, Curtis, take it away, buddy. What is this? This is the next uh, classic um, Amazing Spider-Man epic collection, Man Wolf at Midnight. This is uh, the Jerry Conway run. Now we've mm -hmm. finally moved past the the uh, um, the Stanley years and the Spider-Man <laughs> into the seventies. The Ro uh, Ross Andrew artwork in here. That's right. Yeah, Amazing Spider-Man one twenty four to one forty two. I think this is the this is Punisher makes his first appearance in this book. Mm -hmm. I think, although he's not. Really, 
Thank yeah, you. it's not said. Oh no, the Punisher is in the in the description there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, 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 I'm so sorry. I can't be the only person who's thinking that Man Wolf at Midnight sounds like a very low budget 70s film. Or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with totally. Everyone's open shirts and things. Oh, God. Right. <laughs> Mario Rodriguez, I'm going to try to bring my <laughs> band together for more Matt My Axe because I need those in my life. They were a lot of fun. Him referring to Eternals as the movie made me dislike the video. Hey, hey, hey. I took it back. Captain America. Uh-huh. Uh, Stroom and Drung. Oh, look at that. That was pretty good, dude. Stroom and Drung. All right. <laughs> yeah, this is the last part of the JM DiMatteis run. And we were talking about how yeah. DiMatteis is great in most everything he does. And this is yes. no exception. This is a great run of Captain America. Mike Zek's artwork in this? Yeah. So awesome, man. Yeah. yeah uh, so is- collecting Captain America 286 to 301. So you get that 300th anniversary issue. Yep. I can finally replace my freaking trade paperback up there. What is that? The death of the Red Skull, I think. Yeah. Uh, with this, this, I mean, this. Oh my gosh! There's so much Captain America in Epic Collection. I love it. It's great. Uh, annual well, number seven. You just, you just, if you get redundancies like that, do you just give them away, or what do you do? Yeah, whenever I do, I give away or I donate them to the school systems. There's also little libraries where we live. Oh, I've already looked. We're, well, we're, we're we're in the process of moving, so I've already looked for little library. You know what the little libraries are like? No, of course. No, 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 no I can I can, I can imagine for putting things in the little libraries that are worth reading. Uh, because I love them, and we've got them all around here, and they're fabulous. But you go, and it's like eight copies of Twilight. It's like, oh yeah, god, filled with oh, Laurel Roberts comics books in there, man. No, no, no. The, you do, yes, you do that, and that's awesome. And I congratulate you for it. But Thank I you. I thought about making a video like my kids and I traveling through Central Kentucky, like putting uh, comics in these little libraries. You know, I, mean, I love idea. I love a, a random kid going, huh? Twilight or Captain America: The Death of the Red Skull. <laughs> No. Yes, that's yeah. how we get, get them when yeah. they're young. Uh, Captain America Heroes Return Volume Two. Did we know about this, Curtis? I can't remember. It was uh, it was solicited a long time ago and then kind of disappeared. disappeared. But so kind of like this now. right here, what Glenn is saying. So you want to know what happened to that Silver Surfer, Silver Surfer Herald ordeal that Omar and Curtis announced? Yep, it just vanished. It did. It got replaced with. Uh, volume four, parable. Yeah, there was another volume that replaced it. I will. I don't think it's forgotten. Just kind of, kind of disappeared. But we we'll, we will find out what's going on one day, not by Saturday. <clears throat> I've already used it by Saturday. <laughs> what I found out about the what was it? The Strange Academy hardcover. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic Four Heroes Return, the complete collection, volume four. This is really good. This is this, amazing. Now we got yeah. Fantastic Four wrapping up. Now I can get rid of my Resurrection of Galactus. The because the Inhumans was in the third volume, and this lines up perfectly with uh, Wade's run. It does, yeah. This is a group of of just kind of random issues, random little story arcs that uh, that happened after Claremont left, right? Uh, yeah, Scott, Scott Lobdell and Claremont. Whenever they ended up leaving the book, this has Carlos Pacheco. You have Jeff Loeb coming in here. Um, there is a story, I think Todd DeZago. Yeah, Todd DeZago. Uh, but you still, wonderful artwork in here. Tom Grumet, Carlos Pacheco, Mark Bagley, Stuart Eminent, Jeff Johnson. Yeah. Oh, man, this is it. Now what we need are omnis of these. That would be awesome, man. That would be awesome. I mean, oh, this is cute. Spidey and his amazing friends. Aww. That's that's adorable. The show is pretty fun. <clears throat> you watch it with your kids? Yeah. My kids have been enjoying the crud out of these man mighty marvel masterworks the amazing spider-man volume three you all have been buying them they are great man for i think any age you got to get those bifocals if you're older though um (laughs) these are a smaller print this is great man my kids love the first one they read the second one we didn't review it but they're right now reading dr strange so we'll be reviewing that as a family um both the direct market cover and the standard edition cover available on the same day in july uh, collecting Amazing Spider-Man 20 through 28, Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number Two, the classic Ditko Doctor Strange issue, so cool, man! And another great cover from Michael Cho. Yeah, he's full. I'm glad they chose him as the standard yep. edition cover artist. He's great. Um, all right, we're gonna go back to the beginning to go over some of these books in case you missed it, and then we're gonna talk about what we're most excited for, what you all want us, what what you're most excited for, and if you have any more questions, 
let's, let's answer some questions. Miracle Man Omnibus. This is, um, by the way, I do want to say just really quick, if you do live in Europe and you're interested in purchasing some of these books, pre-ordering them, check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have flat rate shipping to all EU countries for €9.90. Euro Walt, uh, extremely careful packaging. And wow, you heard that? Oh, I can hear everything upstairs. All right. Well, it's coming up, shop. You're, wait, I don't have the words. Oh my you're, gosh. Your source, wait, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions. Ooh, in Europe. Like, you took off work to just come do that. <laughs> that was a virtual day. And hey, inviting everybody um, to, to join us on Saturday live chats because they see some people that um, we don't see in the Saturday live chats every single Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a lot of fun. And Hi, I'm so sorry to say hi first to Lars and Curtis. Hi. Hi, Melanie. How are you today? You done? I'm, you done? I'm, I'm you feel like I'm having a party, birthday party. You're the girl that's like, hey, I'm having if, another if birthday you, party. If, if, better. Yeah, if you want to keep singing, I'll gladly be one of your pips. That's fine. Oh, <laughs> sweet dear jazz hands. The show needs more Melanie. There we go. Uh, oh, well, thanks. No, I'm not as knowledgeable as these guys. Take care, so. Neil. These guys are like, is Predator a movie? I guess it's a movie. I leave them alone for five seconds, and that's what the conversations are having. I don't think we ever said that, did no, we? we? No, we did not. No, I <laughs> know it's a movie, for God's sakes. No, we did not say that. Yeah, starring John claude Van Damme, right? Exactly oh right. Gosh. Yeah. That's what you watched with Lydia the other night. Yep. We watched uh, Predator. So, it, it continue. The uh, They're taking the house as is. Yeah, I've heard. Awesome. All right. Uh, let's go back to this. Uh, Miracle Man Omnibus. Uh, all three covers available the same day. $100 coming out in September. And, oh my gosh. I love that. I love that Alan Davis cover. Uh, Conan the Barbarian, the original Marvel years. The Jim Lee covers your standard edition. The Michael Higgins is your direct market cover. Both are great, but it's Jim Lee, right? Uh, Jim Lee. Uh, Conan the Barbarian, 214 to 240. What if number 16? 704 pages, $125. Savage Sword of Conan, the original Marvel years omnibus. That Sin Cabbage cover is freaking awesome, but gosh, that cover right there is so great, too, by Nick Klein. Uh, this one's $150, but it is a big book. It's 1,056 pages. Uh, it's, this is collecting seven short Conan 102 to 116 and Marvel Comics Super Special number 35. Curtis, this may not seem like a lot of comics, but why is it a lot of pages? Oh, because it's the magazine. It's uh, because it's the magazine. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot. That was an easy answer. Okay. <laughs> Uh, because his magazine, it wasn't part of the comics approved code. They could do a lot more mature content in there. Uh, oh, I love it. Yeah, it, it and it's just they step up the artwork because they it's all black and white, so they use like ink washes and and it's it's beautiful, beautiful stuff. Omar and Melanie doing the handshake from Predator after talking about Predator just made uh, my day. You caught that. I'm so glad you caught that. <laughs> Thought we were being slick. Ultimate Spider Man it, on it, the it, it's what keeps it very spicy that you have these secret handshakes. Oh yeah. Uh, we role play as uh, Carl Weathers and Arnold Schwarzenegger all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of you is Carl Weathers? Don't ask <laughs> personal questions. <laughs> we we, we don't need to know. Man, this volume two. Uh, <laughs> uh, the direct market, two direct market covers and a standard edition cover available <laughs> in September of 2022. This is what you all made happen. You all bought the crud out of the first volume. Yes. I hope you do the same with this one in case you want a third one. But, I mean, I assume if you want this one, you want a third one, too. Mm -hmm. So here you go. Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 2. Collecting Ultimate Spidey 40 through 71. Ultimate 6, 1 through 7. 994 pages. $125. What and I really love Cassidy cover, not Quesada cover, by the way. What I really like about these these stories in this volume two is that um, it broke it started breaking away at this point from being just re reimagining origin stories and stuff to actually um, forming its own its own identity. It's like they bring in Kitty Pride and to, to, as a oh yeah and, 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 and stuff. I love that that innocent relationship they had her and uh, Peter. It's great. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat T two comic book reviews halls and games. So much to buy. I'm glad that you got so much to buy. And thank you again for the super chat, my brother. Um, Spectacular Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1. You have the classic 
uh, Sal Buscema cover, and then the Dave Cockrum cover. Mm-hmm. Captain Marvel by Kelly Sue DeConnick. Uh, this is celebrating 10 years of this particular run. Now, from this, I, what I would love to see collected, because I think everybody has their favorite Captain Marvel, mm-hmm. right? Like, a lot of people are like, oh, I like the original classic. You know, I like the Peter David run. That's my Captain Marvel. I love that era. Because when I was a kid, Captain Marvel had already been, uh, you know, gone. And the Captain Marvel that I knew was Monica Rambo, But she never really had, like, she had a miniseries. And then she was in Roger Stern's Avengers. And then she kind of just disappeared because... Not a lot of writers used her. Yeah. So even if, like, you know, I don't think there's enough material really to do a Monica Rambo omnibus. You might as well just call yeah, it Uncle Roger Avengers. Might be tough. Yeah. Um, I would love to see a Peter David Captain Marvel omnibus. Yes. Um, whether, yeah, and and it would be pretty reasonably sized too. Whether they want to promote that version of the character, which they're not using anymore. I mean, I don't know. This makes more sense with what's going on with the Marvel. You, cinematic universe oh yeah uh, right right, right. But I, would, I would love to see a peter david collection too. but i think you know it opens up doors for other material we've already had like uh carol danvers like the the classic stuff right oh yeah and if they're printing that stuff special with what yeah. avengers 200 uh then we, we know that they might print other stuff hey baby you want to join us well i got a question for curtis Oh, for me? Can, can this wait like until you talk? <laughs> you got to interrupt my show to do it. <laughs> you know, just, other people are interested. Inquiring Minds want to know, how's it going with your Alf Omnibus? <laughs> so I had to put a pause on that for reasons I can't say at the moment. So uh, <laughs> I can tell oh, okay. you more off, off, uh, offline. Because oh. you're trying to find the $900 slabbed Alf number 48, 47? Yeah. Did you buy that one that you posted a picture of the other day? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, Are you two seriously hijacking keep, the Marvel solicitations keep, video to talk about freaking Alf? Alf is Marvel. And just one more thing. Alf is Marvel. It's not a t-shirt. It's not a thing. I keep. I keep. Uh, I keep me and do it today. Hold me accountable today. I need to start looking for the issues. You're going to go look for Alf and waste my money. Our money. Our money. Our money. <laughs> I got that good Whoa. teacher money. Yeah, that good teacher money. Well, it's more than people. what I was making. I'm sorry. Here. Please can't. And, and hey, guys, for saying hi. Thank you. Please Melanie, please. I've got doubles of the first five issues or so. I'll send them to you. <clears throat> oh, thanks. Sure. Thank you. Can we talk about the important thing that Jenna's Val just came back? Jenna's Val just came back. Josh, where did that happen? I may have blinked and missed that. Oh, it was the legacy. They're doing like legacy one shots. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Fair enough. Uh, Spider Verse Spider Geddon Omnibus coming out, both the oh. Koi Pale cover and Kyle. Oh, uh, you might want to drop Marvel an email just to make absolutely certain they're going to put this in the reading order. Because if they don't, we're going to hear the screams about it for years. <laughs> just a thought. You will. Wait till I do my video. Then people will be yelling at me like I put it together. Uh, I will, I will, I will, I will double check with Marvel that this will be in the proper reading order that somebody sits there night and day flipping through each page and, um, okay. I will make that promise. Uh, Star Wars legends, the rebellion omnibus volume one. Uh, this is the classic era of Star Wars from dark horse. It is now known as the legacy era. So you have a Ryan Benjamin uh, cover and a Hugh Fleming cover. A Hugh Fleming cover is awesome. Yeah. I like that one. But it's, Boba Fett, man. That's an awesome cover. And I really like Ryan Benjamin's art. We no spoilers, but we've watched the first five episodes of Boba Fett. I like episode five. <laughs> episode so far, five the was, best. <laughs> was, well, just wait till you get to episode six. It was so good yesterday. Okay, okay. We'll okay, watch okay, it today. Okay, well, we'll watch and that. then B. Arthur's character shows up again. <laughs> <laughs> you are lying. Did you say B. Arthur? B. Arthur. Mars is living in another dimension. Right? <laughs> that would be awesome. Golden Girls they recast Judy Dench as B. Arthur's character from the Christmas special. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Judy Dench still alive. Okay. I had to think. Uh, she Hulk by Dan Slott. This is the one that I didn't announce officially, but here you are. Breaking news, everybody. Didn't even have to put a suit on. Here you go. Uh, she Hulk. And Tyler's asking, how good is She Hulk? It breaks the fourth wall a lot more than uh, mm-hmm. John Burns run. It doesn't take itself seriously, and neither should you. It pokes fun at the distinguished competition in the crisis <laughs> yes. issue. I yes. love that. Um, and then is that the one where the guys at the comic shop are arguing? No, no, that it's like that happens later. It's like a big oh, okay. uh, thing okay. that happens later on. Um, 
but it's a well, lot of fun. But well, you guys really liked it too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you don't know, the basic premise here is that she helped gets recruited into a law or she has to go to work for a law firm that specializes in defending superheroes and supervillains. And it, it, it's just completely off the wall defendants or people who are like um, a murder has been committed and they're like, can we get the ghost to testify? <laughs> and it's just nuts because I think the temptation of She-Hulk is to put her in like, you know, serious courtroom dramas that you see Daredevil in or, or Matt Murdock representing. And that doesn't work quite as well. So this is just crazy. Yeah, the fact that they really leaned into it is, is what makes this really special. Yeah. Pre-ordered all the She-Hulk Omnis for this year. That is awesome. Hey, Omar, any news on a New Mutants uh, hardcover, the Dawn of X era? Nothing yet. I think we're still missing, what, uh, New Mutants and X-Force, if I'm not mistaken, from that era? It's um, slot at his slot. No, no, X, X-Force is coming out. The hardcover? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there is a. What's the other series that's missing? There's another series. I know Fallen Angels, but that was a six issue mini series. Yeah. Or, um, there's another series that hasn't gotten a hardcover collection. Is it just New Mutants that we're missing? Uh, I'd have to mentally run through the list. There's so many of them these days. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, Jose Tyler mm-hmm. is saying that Kelly Thompson is better At... than uh, Captain Marvel. Oh my gosh. Her run on Captain Marvel has been awesome. Like, it's one of those runs that I hate saying this, like, hurry up, get off the book, but not because you stink, but hurry up, get off the book so we can wrap it up better and like make an omnibus out of it. That, like, that way. Look, now people are arguing Deconic is better. Oh, Kelly Tobbs, you guys can take it to the streets. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to Marvel Masterworks, Fantastic Four, Volume 24, more of the John Byrne era, Barry Windsor Smith. Uh, collecting Fantastic Four 258, 268, Alpha Flight 4, Thing 10, Fantastic Four Special Edition 1, Thing 7, and Marvel Fanfare number 15. And yes, finally, for everybody that has been waiting, had it reordered, Predator, the original year's Omnibus Volume 1, both the Chris Warner cover and the Iban Coelho cover, which is an awesome cover, but this one, are you going to eat? Wait, my booty bowl. Okay. And, and, and we established that this was a movie, okay? Um, not many people know that. <laughs> many, apparently, they didn't get in, in Canada. I can't see me again. It started in uh, Alien versus Predator, and then they got their own movie. And the book that uh, somebody was asking if this is ever going to come out in hardcover. So, was that because you really enjoy this, or is that because you really enjoy hardcovers and you get everything hardcover? Um, I've not read this, but I really enjoy Tom Taylor. Everything that I've read by him so far has been phenomenal. Ha! Ah, phenomenal story, come <laughs> Hi, Malachi. What's up, Malachi? What's up, Bar? How are you all doing? You just you go back, go back and rewind and just watch the Omnis. Uh, Bar, don't I miss anything? King Conan, trade paperback, collecting Jason Aaron and Mahmoud Azrar's first six issues. Shang-Chi by Jean Luen Yang, volume three. This is the gentleman that wrote uh, Dragon Hoops. <laughs> Dragon Hoops is so good. Gwenpool announcement. No, nope, no, nope, no Gwenpool nope. announcement. Just She Hulk reprint mm-hmm. Eternals Volume 2. Hell, Thanos. And She Hulk by Rainbow Rowell. Gosh, that cover is everything. It's Jen- oh, I didn't know she wrote She Hulk. Well, this oh. is her first volume. Oh, okay. And this is by Jen Bartel. She's such a great artist. Well, it's either not out or it's barely out. So. Uh, ben Riley Spider Man, which everybody said this is a mini series, uh, written by JM DeMatteis, David Baldeon doing the artwork, and Steve Scrooge doing this particular artwork. But I love that Curtis and I both thought it was Dan Jurgens. That's totally <laughs> uh, Thor by Donnie Cates, volume mm-hmm. four, God of Hammers, <clears throat> and issue 24 is 80 pages. Oh. That's why it's 184 pages, $19.99. But you have the return of Jay Michael Straczynski, Walter Simonson, Dan Jurgens, and more. Waiting for your more joke. More is my favorite writer. Oh, <laughs> Alien Volume Two <laughs> Revival, collecting more of the Philip Kennedy Johnson uh, run, issue seven through twelve. Crimson Rain trade paperback. Doctor Afra Volume Four. Nice. Star Wars by Greg Pak Volume Four. Reign of X Marvel. This is Volume Thirteen. My goodness. Mar- I wonder oh, what that's... the next era will be called. Marvel. This is the one you reviewed. Yeah, that's the one I reviewed, that's and a trade I did paperback. a silly like opening and. Got the most dislikes ever on a video. And well, I looked and everybody people... stopped after 30 seconds. <laughs> You're so hard on yourself. No, I just... Um, thank you to all the people who buy those because, I mean, these days an anthology or an anthology collection like that, that's not done very much anymore. So it's great. No, I love it. 
Yeah. Oh, I think it's a great way. And yeah. honestly, if they ever want to omni, uh, omni buy, how would you put it? <laughs> Omnicide. Omni Omni buy this particular yeah. era. All they have to do is put a bunch of these traits together because you already have the reading order. Add in a couple of minis that these I, didn't collect, like the FF uh, X Men miniseries, and you're good to go, baby. You got yourself a suit. I, I, I believe the Carl proper, <laughs> I believe the proper verb is omnibus. So just if they were to omnibus it, I, Wizard, I took flack for using trade paperback as a verb, but I insist that I was right. Oh, okay. Trade paperback. It. Well, it has the verb trade in it, so there yeah, you that go. makes sense. Yeah. yeah, we need a Savage Avengers omnibus. It just wrapped up. Extremely underrated. That run is extremely underrated, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, it, Destiny of X is Destiny of yeah. writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Excalibur Epic Collection. Sort of. Oh, Curtis, take it from here, buddy. This is epics. <laughs> and, epic and, and um, David is saying the correct term is. Um, Omnibuys. Omnibuys. Oh, sweet. We need to omnibuys that. I, I think language, oh. as long as people understand you, it's fine. So why don't they omnibus that? You got it. You gonna fight? Yeah, Mars. Yeah, of course. David's uh, verbiage is <laughs> the correct way. <laughs> <laughs> Excalibur Epic Collection sword is drawn. New printing coming back to print for all of you who missed it the first time around. Collecting those early issues of Excalibur. Wow. Yeah. Hold on a second. I have never, ever heard this, but now mm. you have piqued my interest. Gwenpool is probably the closest oh. thing we've gotten to recapturing the magic of Morrison's animal man, in my opinion. If that, that could be a strong true. comparison. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, David said uh, he gets to call it Omnibuys because he made it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, sorry, Lars, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> you don't pay me anyway, so what difference does it make? No. I give you credit. I plug your Doctor Who books. That is true. Yeah, they had. I, I, yes, because, you know, this is what writers enjoy. We do it for the exposure. Oh exposure, yes, right. <laughs> uh, Curtis, what is this? This is another Wolverine epic collection, following on uh, off of the the epic collection called The Dying Game. This one's called Tooth and Claw, starring Venom. This is when Wolverine had a teeny tiny nose and bone claws. Bone claws, and he, was, he looked like an ogre. He had it, he had it rough. Uh, and Curtis and uh, Sp Amazing Spider-Man Epic Collection Volume Eight: Man Wolf at Midnight, starring the Spider Buggy. <laughs> hey, Omar, hold on just one second. How many volumes of Predator Omnis to complete the series? I really don't know because I didn't read that many after this particular one. Uh, so there is enough material for an AVP omnibus, though. That's Alien versus Predator, by the way, for all the non -people. Man, Man Wolf at Midnight, not a 70s erotica film. Um, <laughs> I know it's a takeoff of Werewolf by Night. I get it. But <laughs> Look at the collector. He remembers. Hashtag release master kung fu epic volume three. Yeah. Can you find out for Saturday what's happening with that one? <laughs> I give one deadline. No. <laughs> <laughs> Omar, any update on Avengers by Jonathan Hickman, Omnibus Volume 1 and 2? Yes, yeah, somebody emailed me saying they're worried that those are canceled because they're taking off of the catalog. I, I think they're just – how do I put this? They're not canceled – and this is me speaking. I think they're just reshuffling things because there's been so many delays. Yeah. So yep. uh, I, as soon as I find out the dates, of course, I'll be happy to share with you all. But I think they're still figuring out what books should go when. So don't – no I, I think we should, we should all just expect more squishy release dates. It's yeah, not. They, it's it's, it's not like um, whenever I hear cancellation, I always think of like the DC books that have been canceled, and it's not like that. This is just I think they're just reshuffling the schedule. By the way, talking with my own printer in Illinois, they're like the paper shortage is real, the, or, the, or the paper shortage allocation problem is is real. So we have to talk. There, yeah, to deal with that. there's that, and then there's like the the any shipping containers that are being shipped across the country. It's like the. There's so many delays and backups that the yeah. books are just well. It's not just books; it's everything. Um, and David said they they shuffle the Avengers by Hickman Omnibus to the end of 2022, so they're still coming. Mm -hmm. So there's your answer. Didn't even have to wait till Saturday. Omar, um, this is where when you do your like you know physical omnibus 
previews that you've received an advanced copy or something, it's actually quite helpful because we can all go, oh, it's a thing that exists. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, right, I yeah. figured they're not going to send it to you if it's stuck in a shipping container over in China or whatever. So, what, yeah, what, that's great. What's really, um, it's really humbling and, and, and wonderful. Like, people are like, I don't believe the books are coming out until Omar gets his review copy. <laughs> <Omar> <laughs> <has> one. <laughs> so when people don't see me with, because, um, like, I didn't get some of the preprints, right? Like, uh, Uncanny... Or, or no, X Men One or Fantastic oh, Four well, One. Yeah. So they, there was a couple people that like, I was waiting for your overview, so I missed out on getting that book. I didn't know it was out, and I'm like, yeah, oh, right. I, didn't, I didn't get it. So <laughs> uh, it's out though because I talked to them. Like I think it was on Facebook. They messaged me, like so there were like a small group of people that like I didn't know that was out. Nelson says I say that. Where's you do you? Thank you, Nelson. I appreciate that. Um, Wolverine Three, I think, is in October now, so it will be in one of the solicits coming out. Fantastic Four Heroes Return, a complete collection, Volume 4. Wrapping up that era, taking us right to the Mark Wade era. Look how adorable that is. Aww. Spidey and his amazing friends. That is adorable. And Mighty Marvel Masterworks. Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3. The girls love these. Hey, Omar, any news on any more classic Omnis? Silver Age, Bronze Age, Avengers, Fantastic Four, Daredevil. Um... I saw one on the list. Uh, not of these. Not, not, well, uh, how about this? I'll be a little more vague. I saw one on the list that I haven't announced yet. That's Silver Age, um, but I don't know of a lot of others. So near mint live and tacos. That mm. sounds like a good idea. All right, gentlemen, and anybody in the chat, what's the one book you're most excited for, Lars? You know, I feel like a sad, leathery Gen X geek to say Miracle Man, um, no. <laughs> but it's Miracle Man. Uh, and I I feel slightly vindicated in that I've actually held off buying Miracle Man until this point. Well, I, I bought Kindle versions, um, but the Marvel Man collections for me did tip over into ripoff territory. I mean, the amount you were paying for what you were getting, I'm like, I can't do it. Um, I will wait for the omnibus, even if it takes 12 years. And lo and behold, here it is. They go by so quick, don't they? They do. The they years, do. that is. Yeah. No, I, I, I am thrilled and elated, and this is a must-buy for me. Um, okay. And I, I Which other one would be the Dan Slott um, She-Hulk, but I already have that one. So. All right. I'm going to make a video on who Miracle Man is and the importance of him, so just be on the lookout for it that. It is a weird story. <laughs> it is. It is. A, or the, the history of Which cover? Lord comes right. Miracle Man is very strange. Which cover, Lars? <sighs> that I yours. honestly have not been able to decide. Um, Nolan, that is a classic, awesome cover. You have yeah. Gary Leach, and I, then you have I, new I, Alan I, Davis. I don't know. I'm gonna have to spend a couple months agonizing about which cover. <laughs> I'm agonizing. Wow. I like Alan Davis. It, it, it's it's the agony of the geek. Well, this is the thing. I do innately like Marvel Alan family. Davis, but um, they're all good. They're all good. All right, Curtis. Let me get to the epics. What are you most excited <laughs> for? Well, I uh, yeah, I mean, I think the Man Wolf at Midnight Spider Man epic is yeah, probably my number one. one release there. But I'm actually, even though I won't get the um, the Omni because I have a couple of the um, uh, the other books and I just don't buy Omnis anyway. But I am excited that the Miracle Man Omni is coming out because it's an important book that everybody should read. Okay, so that is Amazing Spider-Man, the introduction of the spider buggy. Yep, yep, very is, important. That is your choice. <laughs> right. So important they put it on the cover. Uh, covers. Uh, <coughs> Lars, Quite, David, I, go ahead. David, Gabriel said that you should get all three to make up for not getting the hard covers. All three covers. <laughs> yeah, there you go. They, they should. Uh, why, why the first appearance of the spider buggy has not, you know, gone for higher prices on eBay? I don't know, but we'll see. <laughs> he's fighting with jackals in the background. You got Hammerhead right there. No, What's mean, not the love of this? No, era? exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> oh man, this is a tough choice for me. I don't. There's a lot in this in this particular solicit that I'm excited for. It, it is. I think I'm with Lars though. I think Miracle Man might be my answer, but I'm gonna be a little bit different. <sighs> Man, I okay. The I, little kid Spider Man one. I know I've been waiting for Predator for a long time, just to go back and get those stories that I haven't read in a, so many years. But honestly, Spectacular Spider Man that one holds a special place in my heart because I remember having that cover and I thought I was the richest kid in town because I bought it for like three dollars, a beat up copy of issue number one. 
I, I put it into my, it was the, one of the first issues I remember putting it into a poly bag and I'm like, this is going to be my retirement. I'm going to sell this when I get older. And so I have to go with that one. And it's got like El Tarantula. It was one of the coolest villains I thought in the, uh, you know, from this era. So yeah, that's the one I'm most excited for. What's up, Aaron? How you doing, buddy? Thank you for the super chat, my brother. Looking forward to Spider-Verse spider getting out. Yes. But I hope they add the 2019 Spider-Verse mini. Right, this one here, right, Aaron? The the Spider Zero mini series from 2019. Is this what you're talking what you're talking about? This six issue mini? I gotta go to teacher meeting. Bye guys. Bye bye, Melanie. Join. Thanks, Larson Curtis. Bye guys. All right. Let's see what everybody else is excited for. I kind of like to see what people are excited for in the chat. While, while you're doing that, someone was asking about the Captain Britain omnibus, and you actually have a couple oh. of choices there um, because that should be out pretty quick here. I went ahead and got, there is also a UK only release from Panini. Mm -hmm. This has less, it only has like the um, Alan Moore, Alan Davis, um, Jamie Delano runs. Yeah. But frankly, it's the stuff that I'm more it, interested but in. But it's also in smaller scale, right? It it's is. Not, it's not it like it is. But for me, this is perfect because even though there's stuff before it, mm -hmm. I'm not actually that interested in it. But I'm glad they're releasing it though. For people who want all of it, then you should get the. Up forthcoming release if you just want um again the alan moore alan davis stuff the color the color stuff really okay then this is a good choice thank you so much this channel is how i got into omnibus collecting started last year and have a small collection of around 27 i'm so sorry for your wallet but i'm very happy for your heart and soul miracle man all day ultimate spider-man 2 and miracle man for me miracle man predator uh the komodo man on <laughs> Ultimate Spidey 2, Predator, Captain Marvel. Uh, glad to see I'm not the only essay lover. Ben Riley and Ultimate Spidey 2. I'm glad somebody else is excited for that. Ben Riley, J.M. Demetrius, The Conan Omnis, Uncanny Volume 5. Where did you see that? You're watching another channel. <laughs> Miracle Man, <laughs> Ultimate Spider Man, Omni 2, Spider Verse. I love traffic. the range, man. Everybody's excited for something else. Ultimate Spider Man 2. Tommy, you are dead to me. The tease of a possible ALF epic. Uh, let's see here. Most excited for Spider Verse, Spider Geddon. I'm still trying to figure out who Sp <laughs> Miracle Man is. Spectacular Spidey all day long. Ultimate Spidey, but Miracle Man's up there. Miracle Man, but I wish it was the original version and not the edited version Marvel did a couple yeah. of years back. I don't know what they're. I don't know if they're using those or if they're going to use the original. I really don't know yet. I'm pumped for Donny Kate's store with that special issue. Love seeing that. Captain America: Heroes Return Volume Two. Uh, Predator, since we've been waiting long, and the Nolan cover for that Miracle Man is the correct answer. King Conan, obviously. My man, Princess Omar. Omar, are you talking about Miracle Man and Fantastic Four Volume 1? Uh, are you talking? No. No, that's uh, the Impossible Man, right? Is that what we're talking about? Different character. <laughs> and, oh man... Yeah, that's the panel I was talking about when I meant this is with your content. <laughs> I'm not going to read that. One, one. I can't do that. The Conans, Ultimate Spidey 2, Predator, most certainly Spectacular 1. Uh, Wade Cap, just got the last Jurgens trade and holding off to read the whole thing, all the volumes together. Predator, the leech cover for me, Miracle <laughs> Man and Predator. This is great. I love all these different answers. Curtis's hatred of Omni says be. <laughs> difficult. He doesn't hate okay. them. So I have plenty of big books that are omnibus size. I mean, you look at all of these comic strip hardcovers, right? They're oh, omnibus hold on, size. Hold on. There you go. I don't. I don't dislike big books. I but Marvel is good about releasing things in different formats, and so when they are the size of epic collections, I do prefer that size. And so then I'll just buy buy those. And again, I prefer different. deluxe hardcovers. Yeah. <laughs> uh they should do a superior spider-man omnibus i really think i know people are wanting that right but to me i'm a i would love to see that entire run i got it brother i got your super chat my brother uh i got i would love to see that entire era collected in omnibus format so the, like the brand new day era the uh uh the the um oh my gosh the big time era 
you know, the, the actual dance slot era. I would love to see all that collected in Omnibus format. I know I'm not the only one. I think people really want Superior Spider-Man, and that's like starting with like your best story. Do you have the Muppet Babies Omnibus? So people are asking, does he have any Omnis at all? The only Marvel Omnibus I have is this one right here. That is so hardcore. I love it. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. Do you feel like a Muppet Baby on most days? Yes, definitely. Is this an identification issue? Yep. Okay, yeah. so I just got... Um, uh, a message from David. He said, "Spider Verse will probably be in reading order where possible." So there you go. Nice. There you Thank go. God. Thank God. Good job. <laughs> Everybody's go. a winner. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> and let's see here. Miracle Man, Fantastic Four villain, first showed up in issue three. No, different character. This is a different character. Was hey, Omar? When will be? When will Wolverine Omnibus Volume Three be solicited? Uh, <laughs> if it said yes, Curtis, mission accomplished. You have an omnibus. <laughs> <clears throat> Why don't you have the Muppets one though? If you have Muppet Babies, um, I bought the Muppets in smaller, oh, okay. in the smaller books. Say no more. Say no more. Before the Omnis came out, Wolverine Omnibus Volume Three, I think, is in October now. So we're probably looking at maybe the next solicits in June. That's when that one will come out. What's up, Reaper? How you doing, buddy? Hi, team. Hope you and your families are well. Catch you on the replay. We'll see you there, man. Curtis has hardcovers. Look at you making people gasp. <laughs> if I had to pick one, it'd be Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 2, Spectacular Volume 1, Spider-Man. Yeah, not one, Aaron. But Mar Marvel, Marvel thanks thank you. you for your custom. That's good. And brand new day in big time would take six to eight Omnis, but think how amazing they would look on your shelf. I like them all, man. Look, we got 10 Conan epics or uh, Omnis. That's what I'm saying. Gotta, like, you gotta recognize that. That's awesome. Omar, can you talk to DG about adding the last Spider Verse mini into the omnibus? That Man, Omni so is many already people 14, are asking me about that. It's already 1,400 pages. It's already 1,400 pages. pages but, and that's adding another, like, what, 200 pages to an omnibus? Like, you're talking about, let's see, this is. I don't think that that's possible. It's probably left out because it's Curtis. I hope Marvel says, "Hold my beer, Curtis." I think. I think. I think. <laughs> our be, be be content. Where life, what life gives. I you. mean, it's uh, okay. How about this? It's not unheard of that we have an omnibus that's over fifteen hundred and fifty pages these days. It would just. I mean, I'll be. I'll, I will ask, but I don't I'd, know. I'd, I'd have to. Stop. Wait, how crucial is that miniseries? No, Wolverine Omnibus Volume 2 has the curved spine. Every one of the ones that I saw after that first initial uh, have all the, the curved spine, my brother. Is it possible the Deathstroke Omni has 1,600 pages? It well, is yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely possible. You can make... Well, you could. I, I, how, crucial like... is, how crucial is that miniseries to the narrative? Well, it wraps up a lot of the loose ends, right? So yeah. to, to, complete, to complete this, of course, it would be... Um, Maybe but, uh, that, but, of, but I'm trying to recall. But if the story has ended, you know, I mean, I don't know that you need every epilogue. That you have, you kind of have this problem with Nightfall is that the epilogues go on for so long, the loose ends go right. on for so long. It's like, you're cut it off amazing. Somewhere. Don't you say anything about? No, 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 no. It is. Awesome you thing. can't. You can't have an omnibus that goes on forever. Yes, you can. It's called ah, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, and six. We've established that with Conan already. Your shelves will suffer. Yes, they will. They, they will. will. Don't have any Captain Marvel on these. Well, there's two now. Yeah, you have the uh, the Kelly Sue the Conic one, or you can go with the classic Carol Danver years. Unless they mean the original Captain Marvel on these. You mean the Shazam? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? No, you the uh, oh, no. <laughs> Marvel. <Sorry>. Marvel. <laughs> Or just Sam. They don't have any of those Omnis either, I don't think. <laughs> you all want to see more discussions like we did the continuity one oh. and getting into an argument over that? That was a lot of fun. And you know sure. what? They guess the uh who's it? Peter David just announced the new Fantastic Four. Yes. Series. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. If Marvel just went in that direction, just did all of that kind of stuff with this Ben Riley Spider Man. We're gonna get into this conversation right now. Well, no, no, I mean no, I, I for, I'm well, glad all you all... universes. I'm glad you all enjoyed the discussion, and we should definitely do it. I felt that we were very respectful. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Had a good great. time, even though, of course, Curtis was completely wrong in every possible way. <laughs> you know, but I don't mind being wrong every once in a while. We were all very. <laughs> it's good of you to take it on the chin. All right, so here's Aaron's <laughs> argument to Curtis: Spider Verse isn't as crucial, but it completes the narrative from Spider Geddon. 
and introduces a new spider hero to the Marvel Universe. Well, he introduces the new spider hero. Again, that could go somewhere else. So maybe they're saving it for the next omnibus. Oh, thank you yeah. so much, Reaper. This is this is my dude right here. Hit that like button and sign up for the dollar Patreon. If you buy a book from this, you can afford $12 a year. <laughs> thank you. I feel like <laughs> Sally Struthers and somebody feeding me. Thank you. Thank you. No, seriously. that That is really sweet, man. Uh, are there any new Blade Omnibus coming with the movie coming along? Well, Curtis oh. just saw himself out, so maybe his internet died. I haven't heard, but perhaps – I mean, there is – if they do something like they did with uh, Black Widow, right? Like, we could get a Blade Omnibus in that format. That would be really cool. There he is. Let me bring him back in. You Don't saw yourself out. There. Did, did, you, did you get the paddles, Curtis? To bring you back to life? <laughs> That's right. Yep. It always the Lazarus pit. <laughs> have you heard anything about the Dr. Afra restock? Dude. I haven't, man. I didn't even know it was out of print until you guys brought it to my attention a couple of weeks ago. Um, I know people have been finding them at Ollie's, so maybe they're liquidated. I don't, I, I honestly, I have not heard, yeah. uh, but I have not heard about a restock. Yeah. Omar, when is the Marvel Most Wanted Omnibus reprint poll? That will be happening this month. I hope to announce the other reprints before we do it. That way you don't lose a vote or, you know, uh, waste a vote. Right. So it all depends on how my scheduling goes. Will we get a hardcover collection of Kelly Thompson's Black Widow? Ah, maybe one day. What is this Ben Riley stuff you keep mentioning? I was uh, <laughs> late to the stream. Is there another? There, No, it's not an omnibus. It's a new mini miniseries uh, that's been written by James DeMatteis, kind of like their symbiote spider-man mini that peter david has been doing i love that they're doing that i love that peter david is writing one long ongoing story in little mini series kind of like the way curtis wants to see the world yes i i enjoy <laughs> it thoroughly it's a bit hard to keep track of which is which so actually well peter's still writing it but an omnibus collection would be helpful because that's all together Anything on Marvel's next wave on the best teams ever? One of the best teams ever. I agree. I love that era. Uh, I think we got two hardcovers, two trades, a complete collection. That's I haven't heard anything else about next wave. But that, again, has a worn out, right? Problematic uh, creator right now because Netflix let him go from Castlevania. You can do your own research to find out what's going on with that. I try to stay positive and talk about things. But if I know about something, I do like to tell people about it. But if that stuff doesn't bother you, then you're more um, more than welcome to, you know, you can either buy it or not buy it. Still, I'll, I leave it up to my viewers to decide. Hello, Omar. Call in sick today. Love is a cherry on top. Thank you, man. Good that word. is so kind. I'm glad you called in sick, man. Come on, Clone Saga reprints. I can dream. I'm you know, I, well, we're doing the reprint poll, so it's really up to you all to to kind of, you know, see what, what what's what's of interest. And I've heard so many people talk about the Clone Saga reprints that it's, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things that I had no idea there was a huge interest for. My dog's going crazy out there for something. I was going to say, are the police coming for you? or They better yeah. not be. <laughs> <laughs> or I will be leaving this stream. So... It's interesting that people are now asking for a Clone Saga reprint. Like, I never thought yeah. that would be the one, right? Because when that book came out, I remember the – I was on forums. I wasn't on Facebook or anything like that. But I remember forums were like, this is not joke. good. Or the Why is Marvel wasting paper on this? And I always think of things like Onslaught. Like, Onslaught is not my favorite story. I made it yeah. pretty clear on this. But it's somebody's favorite story. There is an audience for this stuff. Yeah. And – that's what happened with Clone Saga. You know, people are like, "This is this is a waste of money." They're gonna, th this is gonna be twenty dollars in in on D Header's eBay site, and they weren't. I mean, they were gone. And then Ben Riley came out, and those were gone. Or Volume Two, Volume One is the one that's gone. Um, it, it, you know, it also depends on what age you were, because there are, there's a certain crop of people, I think a bit younger than me, who like Clone Saga was one of the big story Spider-Man stories that they read. Mm -hmm. At that particularly tender age, and so I don't know. For all I, it would would it sell or not would be the question. It, it might. Um, you quickly learn that just because something isn't good, people might fondly remember it. Like Cap Wolf, I am not too <laughs> fond of Cap Wolf, but you know, if people wish to buy it, that's awesome. But it's still that man. That is still Mark Grunwald's run. It's so well. Wild. Yeah. See, you know. 
Well, so clone, clone clone saga is I'm glad you want something still. warts and all. Yes. Oh, I love it, man. How can you appreciate the good if you don't go through the bad? Yeah, sometimes. No, that's absolutely yeah. true. I mean, yeah. sometimes you go through a lot of bad, though, to get to that <laughs> one good. <laughs> but I'm well, yeah, if, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. I I try to uh, I try to put, put that idea on my kids because we live in an age now. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get on my freaking. <laughs> pedestal here all right so look we live in an age now where you can skip things right like you live on a streaming age where you can have the capability of sitting there watching a show going yeah i don't want to watch that that was boring. next episode let's do something else. give me the highlights like we, we have tiktok we have all these other you know, we used to have vines with like 10 second videos right yeah like it, it's not like we can appreciate long pauses in movies anymore it's crazy the age we live in. So I try to like push that idea to my kids that sometimes you got to go through the bad to appreciate the good. How can you know a story is good if you've not read, you know, all these other issues that were there leading up to this really good story that you appreciate? I think you appreciate the good story more if you see everything else that's coming out. That's why when I talk about like uh, series that are omnibus, I'm sorry, omnibus editions that are complete, like I think of Excalibur, like if they had released an Alan Davis, Chris Claremont omnibus, that's everything that's good. But I think going through the rough patches of those and then some of those issues that are hidden gems, I think it's also a good idea to get uh, to appreciate those good stories that come around. I well, anyway, that's well, what I'm thinking. And years ago, they did release just the Claremont Davis stuff, you know, in, in the normal soft if, covers. Okay, this is a good point, though. Marcel is saying if you have infinite time and infinite money, yes, go through the bad stuff to get to the good. I personally prefer to save time. Well, and money. yeah. And I don't know. Maybe we need to have a discussion about – um, that, really that, that really is a good discussion. You're right. Maybe, maybe we need to have a discussion about being a completist or not because I will admit I have never had the completest book. Never. You are dead to me. Uh, sounds like Omar is making excuses <laughs> to justify reading Onside. I don't need excuses. I will reread it. My kids went through all of Dragon Ball Z uncut, okay? That's how I'm like, <laughs> oh, man. I love well, my kids. I see, like, you know, I, I think I'm as big an X-Men fan as Omar. I was there at the right age. Well, and Curtis, too. Um, I don't own Onslaught. Oh, God, no. Um, you know. I do because of the X curse. I love that. I love to have it all on the show. And, and and there might be one or two, you know, properties that you're willing to suck it up and buy everything for. You know, like my wife is a big Star Wars fan, so this is what she does. Um, um but yeah, not many. Not many. Yeah. I I, I, I was it Michael who said that. I agree with Michael. Your life is much happier if you're a non-completist in terms of your money in space. Oh yeah, money in space, absolutely. Yeah. But you're so missing. How, out how complete are your Doctor Who books? Are they very complete or not not complete? Um, well, I mean, I had to process. Well, okay, no, no, that's like, okay. Uh -huh. You appreciate pizza if you don't drink battery acid first. I'm not comparing <laughs> onslaught to battery acid. Um, well, very quickly, okay, so I've actually read all of them because I have to to do things like this. Yeah, um, well, either I or Lance has to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's been quite a few long stretches where, like, if I'd just been me as a Doctor Who fan. I wouldn't have read them, for sure. Yeah. Um, Bad Wolf but, is the same. My doctor well done, Bad Wolf. Wolf. Well done. Um, but but because I had to, that's a different calculation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, and I'm when Seven Eleven put your floppies in a bag. Heck yeah, man! <laughs> I've only been an X Men fan for a little over a year now, but I've also got the completest book with those Omnis. Yeah. And it's not for everybody. Uh, you know, people are right. You, know, you have to have the time and the money and the space. That's the other thing, too. These books do take up a lot of space. But to me, I mean, yeah. it's what brings me happiness and joy, even reliving some of the crappy stories, because it will always remind me of where I was in my yeah. life at that point. Like the Clone Saga. That was towards the end of, like, me collecting comics for the first time. Like, I was in high school. I was about to get out. But I remember those issues. I remember the return of the villain that I was really upset about. And I'm like, no. That guy needs to stay dead forever. <laughs> but, <I'm not> gonna... <laughs> but but also also just expense because like I, so I did a spreadsheet of like all the collections that are out that I don't have and mm -hmm. all the ones we like now in September that have been announced and these are this is all stuff that I actively want. Okay, this is not even like completest bug like stuff that I actively want. It was like seventeen hundred dollars, and I was like, I don't think that's happening. So. Mm. I have to be selective just for reasons of money and space anyway. Yep. Aurora Boreals. Was that Aurora, the guy's Aurora, name? Aurora. That's an awesome name. I didn't even catch that. 
Uh, I'm a completist for every book I read. What's the Bex <laughs> Omni for X-Men? Uncanny Volume 3 or 1? Those are my favorite. Curtis, I know it's an omnibus question, but which era would you think is the best X-Men omnibus? Uh, best X-Men omnibus for events? For, for anything. You just In, in general. What is oh, in general? Yeah. Um, Age of Apocalypse, I think. I Ooh. That was... Yeah, wow, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, that that was my. Uh, we were talking about you know periods in your life that were yeah formative and such. And Age of Apocalypse was that for me. That that coincided with Clone Saga. So with that, which is also, mm-hmm. which I also enjoy for that reason. Uh, what about you, Lars? What would you suggest? Like somebody's like, give me the best X Men omnibus. I mean, the thing about Claremont is it goes on for so long. Um, it is hard to kind of pick one in there because you're like, well, I can pick the Dark Phoenix saga, but as much of it. You know, honestly, is the Grant Morrison one in print? It's out of print right now. It's out of print right now. Yeah, um, I, I I might recommend the Grant Morrison one if it was available. Other otherwise, you're right. Like Uncanny X Men Volume Three is pretty hard to beat. I love that. Uh, what was your question, Nathan? Please ask it again, because I sorry, man, my brain. Because we started rambling. Um, not not here. I'm going to give Omar a T-shirt with Onslaught Six out of Ten. Um, <laughs> 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 what Omar we need a J.M. Demetrius Spider-Man omnibus including Craven's Last Hunt to fill the gap between Roger Stern and McFarlane Mich- McLeany Omnis yes I agree we do yep. Curtis speaks the truth of Age of Apocalypse it's there fantastic. you go there we go so well, the, the best part about that is it has a beginning and it has an end. It's not it's not an omnibus that, you know, yeah. the story continues and you have to get Stop. the next one or whatever. Claremont Lee Volume 2 is the beginning of the new Age of X-Men. It's the one that yeah. the cartoon is based on. So I know a lot of people, you know, yep. um, have a special place in their heart. I, sometimes starting at the – you're right, Curtis. I th- yeah, Age of X-Men is self-contained. Sometimes starting at the beginning is a bit overrated. Um, my, again, first X-Men ever was John Byrne's last issue. And, you know, especially back then when they're writing to explain to people oh, what the heck is going the, on, can you, you can pick it up. So I, I think you probably could read like volume three and you'd probably be fine. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But it's like, if you, I think that when a story is written with the intention of being self-contained, it just seems a little bit more. Yes. Um, I don't how, know. <laughs> um, really quick, Nathan's asking: Are there any complete collections announcement coming soon? How about I, I I will ask Marvel if they will let me release those with the Epic collections because I think we've done that in the past and it's a lot of fun because I think most people that get Epics also get complete collections for Modern yep. Age collections. That'd be great. I, I don't think that would be a problem to ask to go with this Batman six out of ten. He's a occult detective six out of ten, and I stand by my statement. Uh, any uh, somebody was asking Aiden was asking about the wood bun uh, Moon Knight. It's coming out in a complete collection. It is it's wood yeah. Ellis and Bun all in one uh, complete collection. Wait, it is. Yeah, there's a complete collection coming out of wood Ellis and Bun. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Oh, sounds like a law firm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Paramount X Men based on the artist he worked with. Each artist is an era for and. And you could tell his favorites because they started co-plotting with him. Yeah. Um, Burn, strong co-plotter, right? Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. Yes Jimmy and no. Huge co-plotter. For, for, for me, the Mutant Massacre is the hard dividing line between the two eras, but yeah. How dare you, sir? White Batman complete collection. Batman is white. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Moon Knight calling him white Batman. Are epic collections only for books in the sixties to nineties? This was a, this was a, this is an interesting question because at one point we did have a cutoff date for the epics. We thought, okay, anything past like onslaught would be not epic. But Curtis, what was the first book? Was it Wolverine that went past ep- uh, onslaught? Yeah, Wolverine, um, the one that includes the origin miniseries it goes into the two thousands. But it's um the thing the thing about it is. They're generally they generally speak they generally stick to that. I think rather than thinking of it in terms of cutoffs, it's ter- in terms of they want to com- they want to collect, um, you know the the first volumes of all of these characters, which coincidentally most of them ended at onslaught. Well, Mar- I don't think that Moon Knight book was announced. Am I dreaming? Did I make up that book? I could have. I, I I don't remember it. I I remember it being talked about a lot. I remember oh, people saying are. how awesome it would be. 
I don't think it was announced. Oh my gosh. You H- hence hence my confusion. Wood. It's like a wood bun. The, the, the complete Bendis just, I believe, yeah, came that out. Came and, out. And I believe they're getting like, a Jeff Lemire complete collection. No, the last time I was on your solicit video, there was a Moon Knight book that had three creators, and I don't know which ones it was. But I thought it was Ellis, uh, Bun, and Wood. I know. I could have sworn I announced that. Could be. Um, Maybe but, I'm dreaming, though. But the the Bendis one, I'm finally reading that on Marvel Unlimited. And yeah, it's interesting. It's a, it's a, okay, so that, when I was doing an overview of that, I made sure to tell people, this is an interesting take on, on Moon Knight. He has not ever written like this before or after Bendis. This yeah. is the way that Bendis saw Moon Knight. So, you know, if this is your first time reading Moon Knight, don't expect that to carry over into another series. No. Um, th- it, it, without spoiling exactly what happens in there. It was Houston, Benson, and Hurwitz. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. Aha. Uh-huh. That's the one. All right. Yeah, there you go. Th- thank you all. Yep. I am a madman. I was thinking of some other creators. So sorry about that, Lars. No, no, no. It's quite all right. Um, but well, I'm I saved you some money from your $1,700 budget that you have. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. Um, I – uh I'm only part way into the Bendis. I haven't – okay. I'm more <laughs> <of> <laughs> uh, and thought he announced it. No, 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 no. There's a lot of personal things going on in my life. My dad's in the hospital. We're in the process of moving. So I really and, – uh, and, when, and when you want something so badly, it I'm just kind of becomes real in your head. I want an omnibus of that era. I don't I don't want a complete collection. I want an omnibus. If you keep saying it often enough, it will happen. We will make it happen. We'll make it happen. Sorry, man. I, it, yeah. it, but this is where you'll hear about it first. <laughs> <laughs> so Houston, Benson, and Hurwitz. Yeah, sorry about that. Thanks, Barr. Uh, he's a little bit better. They're trying to move him to another facility because he's got a little bacteria in his blood, trying to figure out what's going on with him exactly. He ended up getting COVID is what happened again, uh, which really sucks because he's. Yeah. I was with him in the emergency room all day Saturday after leaving the stream. I went over there. And then I had to get tested a couple of times. So, so thank you. Thank you for the kind thoughts. Not to be uh, nosy. Did he get it from being in the hospital? Uh, COVID? Yeah. Or uh, no, no, he went in like that's he went in because the, of the COVID. He, he he got in. He went in because he had stomach issues, and we were trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. Um, and then they tested him, and it was COVID, and his his levels are stabilizing. So okay. hopefully everything is okay, and yeah, you know, I get to get to see him soon. So I know my kids okay. miss him. I miss him. You know, it's my dad. Yeah. yeah. A lot of my, or, or, a lot of my humor comes from there. Qué bueno que tu papá está mejor. Le deseo un pronta recuperación. Muchas gracias, hermano. De verdad. The Falco Spider Girl Omnibus. We need it. We need a lot of the Falco. The Falco doesn't have a single Omni, does he? Um, I don't Thor, think so. Fantastic Four. His uh, Spider Man would be awesome in Omnibus format. And Spider Girl, very underrated series. Only my finger crossed for your dad. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Uh, I hope Omar remembers Alpha Flight reprint. He didn't announce. It. I didn't announce it. I said it would be really cool. It's up to you all to uh, when I take it out to the poll this month sometime. I'm trying to get some help uh, from a couple of my viewers um, that are going to help me with James and Luis. That helped me last year with that. That might that might actually sell a few copies because it's been out of print a while. Yeah, and if we get a volume two, that would be so great. Mm. I love Bill Mantlo's stuff. Um, well, at this time, I just want to remind everybody to smash that like button. Check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com here in the U.S. Tell them your main condition sent you their way for free shipping on your first order, on your next first – or first order after your first – next door uh anyway y'all know what i'm saying <laughs> and thank you to david gabriel and the folks at marvel for sending us yes. this advanced solicits thank you mm-hmm. to my co-host to my right is the norwegian assassin large where can people find you if they want to stalk you or know a little bit more about you, <laughs> you. yes well if you're a doctor who fan uh you know we, we publish a lot of doctor who guidebooks um through, uh, as mad norwegian press uh, and we will be doing a, we do the about time series which to, to, puts Doctor Who in the social and political context in which it was made. Um, and we will be doing a second edition of the Tom Baker volume, About Time for That'll be coming out later this year. We're about to schedule that formally. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving us some Doctor Who love here in America. Yeah. Um, Curtis, what about you, buddy? Where can people find you? What kind of content do you put out there? Um, I have a podcast called the Epic Marvel Podcast, where we talk about classic Marvel comics. We actually follow the the mapping of the Epic collections as we go through the episodes. Uh, and you can find me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter if you just search for Epic Marvel Podcast. 
Um, and YouTube. I'm almost at a thousand subscribers, Omar. Awesome, just, buddy. Just that's great. Oh, really? Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I've, I've got like Wait, on, on YouTube. Go. On YouTube, yeah. What thousand. are you on YouTube? What's the name of the channel on YouTube? Epic Marvel Podcast. There you go. That's where the yeah, after party. Chris, happens. is that just a recycling of the podcast, or is it something different? Uh, I do post the podcast episodes there, but I also do short little videos on a couple of different things. I actually started a new series just this last week based on this wonderful book that I have here, 1001 Comics You Must Read Before You Die. And so I've oh, made, been making little short cool. videos on some of the comics that I've discovered because of that book. And okay. it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. That's yep. awesome. 1001 yeah. Comics. You know what? I'm going to write a book called 1002 Comics. You need to read it. <laughs> okay. It'll be completely different. Awesome. <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, what do you guys think about the Marvel Comic NFTs on VV app? Those are two words. I don't know. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I think it's sure. Cool. If that's if you're into NFTs and VV apps. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Smash that like button on the way out. We are. I will be back live Saturday. There. I think the Superman reading order kicks off tomorrow. If everything goes as well, hopefully there's nothing going on in my life. Uh, and yeah. everyone, thank you for joining us. Stay healthy and safe out there. Much love. Yeah. Godspeed.